Gamers, I've created a lot of builds in my three and a half years of being a creator. In fact, I've made over a thousand. So I wanted to make this video to showcase 500 of my best builds as a one-stop shop for inspiring you in creating your own builds. I'll be rapid firing through all 500. So if you wanna get a closer look at any of them, they're all available to download on my Patreon. Link in the description. All right, let's get started with build number one. Starting off strong, we have a walled in arched detailed pathway design that I created with my friend Extra Builds. We've added all kinds of details like little cracks in the ground with water in some of them. We've added little campsites on the sides, heaps of barrels, chests and leaves everywhere. Definitely a really nice pathway for a village or anything of the type. The next couple of builds are going to be some aesthetic automatic farms with this first one here being an automatic melon farm. As you can see here we have a bunch of observers and pistons up above here that'll automatically harvest all of the melons once they've grown and we can head down here into the chest to just simply grab them out. Next up it's a simple aesthetic sugarcane farm. We've got the classic setup using observers servers with pistons below to harvest the sugar canes which will then get picked up by this minecart with a hopper and then put into the chest down below. Aesthetic farm number three is a cactus farm. This one you don't even need any redstone for, you just simply have some fences which will make the grown cactuses pop off, get sent into the water down below and straight into the chest here. The final aesthetic automatic farm we have for this segment is actually in the nether and this one is an XP slash gold farm. As you can see at the front here we have a whole bunch of pigmen lured in here, all we have to do is just stand on top of the tower up here here, shoot a pigman and they'll all get sent down into this down below. Then you can simply head down the ladder in here and just whack them all to death and you'll get all of their drops in the chest here too. This next build is uh, basically just the back rooms. Uh, yeah, it's kind of creepy. Um, I was definitely going through a bit of a back rooms phase where I just, I don't know, I just really love the back rooms. So I just, uh, you know, made this in Minecraft basically. The next couple of builds are all just different levels from the back rooms, with this one here being the pool rooms, essentially just an entire, like, I don't know, labyrinth just basically filled with pools. The next level is uh, basically just a sewer system. We've got these three, like, arch sections where we've got some of them fenced off. This one's been broken out as if some kind of monster has, uh, yeah, you know, broken out or something. Um, yeah, that's about it for this one. And for the final bloody back rooms level, we just basically have an infinite train. I built this in a way so that it just looks infinitely repeating, even though, you know, it just kind of ends over there. But uh, in the picture, I kind of did it like this so that you can't really see that. Uh, yeah, it, that's all this one is, basically. Next up, we have this bamboo forest design that I built with my friend Extra once again. We're basically just completely surrounded by bamboo, except for behind us, where it's just nothing. Uh, don't worry about that. And uh, yeah, in the path in the middle as well, we also have this little canal design that runs up along these stairs too. And uh, once again, it yeah, just kind of ends there. Don't worry about that. Next up, we have this absolutely whack creation here from my AI video. Um, definitely go watch that if you want to understand what this is. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about it. Next up, we have a simple little base design embedded in the side of like a little bit of a cliff here. We've got a fully glass entrance here with a couple of crop farms and inside we've just got a nice simple little layout in here. This next one's in the same kind of vein as the previous one except it's mainly just wood instead of glass. We've got the same kind of crop fields outside and another little bit of a simple base layout inside. This one's uh, yeah a little bit unfinished, uh, just don't worry about it. This next one is a beach recreation that I made uh, using a reference picture. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, once again, it's kind of just this area, but I think this was from a Windows Spotlight image, you know, the ones that you see on like your lock screen and stuff, and basically I just recreated it because I thought it was a really nice picture. To go along with our previous beach design, we have uh, another one. This time it's uh, a little bit different. We've got a bit of a pier here with a pathway that leads down to it from the surrounding forest. We've also added some custom palm trees, a bunch of little decorations, and some stones as well to tie it all together. We've got a couple more beach designs coming up with the next one basically being two in one. We've got a custom custom beach design around here. We've also got a custom little coral reef with a, a bit of a shipwreck design inside of here as well. And the final beach build for now, we just have a little bit of like a trading post thing set up on the end of a pier here. We've got a bunch of little spots where some boats can arrive and then they can head up to this little trading post here to buy some goods. Next up, we've got a bit of a beacon design. The next couple of ones are going to be some more beacons uh, that no one has actually ever seen because I completely gave up on them because um, yeah, it's not too great. Here's beacon design number two. I like this one one, probably the most out of the three because, uh, you know, it's just a little bit of a ruined castle tower thing. If you're wondering how we're getting the beacon coming up through the ground here, we've used a stone slab here to cover up the beacon. 
Whoopsie daisy. And for the final beacon design, we have one in a bit of a Japanese gazebo well style where we just have, actually, yeah, it is a well because there's water in here. And uh, yeah, we've basically just got the beacon in here with the beam coming up through a slab in the roof here. Now it's onto a couple of interior bedroom designs with this first one here being for a two player setup where we've got personal storage on the left, this bed here, and then we've got another bed on the right with more storage for this player. Um, yeah. The next bedroom is a, another two player design. This time we've got a bunk bed instead with a nice little storage chest here and a decorative lectern on the side. The next bedroom design is for a single player and we have like this encased bed design. I don't really know what it's actually called, but you know, it's got like all the frames around it and stuff. Looks kind of cool. And for the final bedroom for now, we have a bit of a simpler design, just a single bed. We've got some storage barrels on the sides and a nice little like cute roof design around it too. Next up, we have a definite fan favorite here. This one is a bee sanctuary. I remember this did really well at the time on Instagram. A lot of you guys liked it. So uh, definitely thought I'd showcase it now, but yeah, we basically just have this giant glass dome here. We've got a custom tree design and we've also of course got our little beehives in here as well. I love this neat little design here of like this kind of curved roof. And then we also just have like a whole bunch of entrances as well. So you can enter from any side. Now it's time for another build that I don't think I've showcased anywhere. Uh, this one is meant to be like a beer factory. Uh, I had a little bit of a series going where I was making IRL farms and I thought IRL factories would be pretty cool. So I tried my hand at a beer factory and it looks kind of weird. And I think I, yeah, I just gave up on this. This one's actually a bit more of a recent build if you can call uh, last year, early last year, basically recent. Uh, this one is a below ground base. So not completely underground because we're still exposed here. But yeah, I actually really love the way this turned out. I don't think I've posted this anywhere, but basically we have two stairways down that lead around to this like little looped area. We've got a bit of a little uh, river thing here too. And then the actual base on the inside here, we've got like a bunch of storage, our smelting, crafting, you know, everything you could need in a base is in here. And yeah, I think this is really cool. I might end up making something similar to this in my hardcore series maybe. Next up is another build that no one has seen before. This one was made with Extra and myself, where we basically just made a little dock here and then we each had one side to decorate. This is Extra's side over here. It's like a little bit of a house design thing. Kind of cool in here. And then this one's my side. Um, yeah, definitely nowhere near as good as Extra's side. And uh, yeah, I, you can probably see why I never posted this anywhere. For this next build, we have a massive stone bridge design with dual arches, a massive pillar in the middle. We've got like a little bit of a hobo den below here as well. And up here, we've just got a couple of roofed sections at either end and just a bunch of nice little details throughout it as well. Next up is a big medieval house design that is a little bit messed up. Just don't worry about what's going on here. But yeah, I actually really love this house. I built this with extra builds quite a long time ago. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a very unique looking medieval house. This interior in here is probably one of the most favorite interiors I've ever made. I don't know why. It's just so simplistic, and but it's just laid out so nicely. And upstairs is uh, not quite as nice, but yeah, definitely a really cool base. Next up is a big pirate cove. We've got a nice decorative decorated little arched area here that kind of goes in towards the ocean. We've got heaps of glowberries around the place to keep it nice and vibrant. And then off to the left here, we've got a little bit of a pirate trading stall. For these next builds, we've got a couple of biome specific bridge designs with this first one here being a desert bridge. I don't really like this one too much compared to the others. It's definitely a little bit of a weird design, but it was quite hard to do. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. <laughs> this one here is the forest biome bridge. This one is very simple, but definitely turned out pretty nice. It looks a lot better with the better leaves add-on, just adds nice bushiness, but uh, it still looks good for now. This one here is the jungle bridge. Once again, a very simple, a little bit of like a suspended bridge design. Next up is the spruce biome bridge. Uh, there's nothing really about this that makes it specific to the spruce biome, except for the fact, I guess, that it has spruce wood in it. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's just a nice little small arched bridge design. Probably one of my most favorite bridges I've made. It's just so small and looks so elegant. Yeah, I love it. So those first four bridges were made by myself and these next four are actually made with one of my most favorite builders, Cryptozoology. Be sure to check out his channel. And this one here is obviously in the flower forest biome and it turned out so nice. I love this. We've got a nice little garden on the top. We've got heaps of leaves to keep it lush throughout the bridge. We've used a bunch of different wood variations on the pillars here. And yeah, dude, I just, oh, this is such a nice bridge, man. The next one here is the snowy biome bridge. This time we've used dark oak, spruce and heaps of spruce leaves as well. Up top here, we've got a nice little walkway, of course, you know, the main bridge part. And then underneath here, we've left enough clearance for a boat to get through as well, which is a pretty neat feature, of course, you know, for a bridge. Next up is the Dark Oak Biome Bridge. This one is just a simple single arch, very low to the ground bridge as well. Can be made pretty much anywhere just across any kind of like small amount of river. And we also made sure to decorate the surrounding area with these nice little reed designs and also a little bit 
of a beach over here too. And for the final biome bridge here, we have the Badlands one. This one is yet again another suspension bridge, but we did utilize a pretty interesting design here where we've got like the top hand railing that's kind of supporting the below like bridge. I don't think this would work. Uh, any engineers are probably crying right now. Um, but yeah, it looks cool though. <laughs> These next builds we're going to go through very quickly. There's some biome paths. This first one here being the oak forest path. Um, yeah, we just used azaleas, fallen logs as details, moss and uh, stuff like that basically. For the next one here, we have the jungle biome path. We've utilized a bunch of different stone brick variations here. We've added some cracks in the ground as well and just heaps of bushes of course and little stones with lanterns on top. The next one here is the snowy biome path. We've got little lanterns on some stone brick little walls here as like little lanterns of course, you know, and we've got a bunch of details here with some barrels, chests and some sweet berry bushes as well. And for the final biome path here, we have the spruce one. This one once again has some more sweet berry bushes. We've got a little bit of a campsite on the left side too, which I love this little detail here. Next up, we have a very simple and uh, I don't really know if I like it, uh, birch house here. I did not build this. I believe it was extra that built this, so I'm sorry, um, but your house is ugly, bro. <laughs> Definitely an interesting layout. We've got a lot of oak trap doors on here and uh, heading on inside, we have a, a very simplistic layout as well, which is, um, you know, it's all right. These next four builds are gonna be some blacksmith designs here with this first one being a medieval one. As you can see, we've just got like a big workshop interior here. This is meant to just be interior, obviously the exterior, just don't worry about it. But we've got a nice little lava forge here. We've got a cooling bucket. We've got a bunch of anvils. We've got iron and stuff everywhere. Dude, I love this build. It is so nice. For the next one here, we have a blast furnace, which is actually based on the blast furnace from old school RuneScape, which I have been playing recently. I spent a few hours in this place grinding out some smelting levels. Kind of emulated it here uh, uh, decently, I guess. We've got a bunch of anvils. We've got some shelves with some storage. We've got ore everywhere and just like the massive little smelting area here too. For the third blacksmith design, we have this one here, which is based in like a cave. And it's actually based on the uh, blacksmith area from Dark Souls 3, where you have like the Andre guy, I'm pretty sure is his name. He's like smacking this anvil here. And I just added a bunch of lava in the background and just heaps of random details everywhere. And for the final blacksmith, we have a ruined one because I could not think for the life of me of a third design. So we basically just have one that's been destroyed. Kind of a cop out, I know, but um, yeah, what can you do about it, mate? For this next one here, we're back in the nether with an interesting blaze spawner design. We've actually got two. Uh, just give me a second, we'll get to that one. But yeah, basically this one is just the simple layout. You just walk in, uh, you smack the blazes, you walk out and you go home, mate. And for the second one over here, we've got uh, a bit of a bigger design. This one actually being fully automatic as well. So basically the blazes spawn in here. They get sent down this hole through the lava. And then we can actually walk all the way down here or fly uh, and smack the blazes here. And all of their items will get placed into these chests here. Next, we have four boat designs of varying uh, increasing sizes with the first one here being a little bit of a rowboat. Uh, yeah, pretty cute design. We've just got some enclosed trap. Oh, Jesus Christ, that scared the crap out of me, man. We've got a boat here enclosed in some trap doors and we've got a little sail on the back here too. Uh, yeah, pretty cute. Getting a little bit bigger in size here. We've got a proper little, uh, I don't know what you'd call this, but like a, a bigger rowboat basically. We've got a bigger sail here too and a couple little details. This third and even bigger design is actually based on the sloop from the game Sea of Thieves. I love that game, mate. I love a bit of sot. Um, but basically, yeah, we've just got a little bit of a, an interior design here as well, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, once again, I don't know what else to say. It's a bit of a bigger boat, mate. And for the biggest boat, we have uh, the brig. I don't know. It's the second uh, biggest boat in Sea of Thieves, basically. I also came up with this capstan design where you just lower some armor stands in and you push a piston across to uh, enclose it up. Looks like, a you know, the thing that you lower the anchor with up here, we've got uh, the steering wheel, which is uh, a lectern. Uh, we've got storage and we actually have another interior area here, which I didn't add anything into. Next up, we have a cute little bookstore design, which was actually not made by me. I take no credit. I'm pretty sure this was built by Blue Xander Builds and also Extra Builds. But yeah, we've got a nice little brick and wood exterior around here with heaps of little details. And heading on inside, we have a heavily detailed interior. You won't catch me doing this amount of detail, mate. I'll give you the bloody hot tip. We've got, for some reason, uh, my head in here. We've got Extra's head. We've got, yeah, just heaps of details. Such a nice little design. For the next four builds, we've got a couple of interior little segments here for some brewing designs, with the first one here being, uh, I don't know, it's 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 just a nice little layout, I guess. The second design, once again, we just got a nice little layout, this time with a bit more of a stone vibe. We got a basalt little pillow here and just heaps of little brewing stands. Kind of a weird setup, but uh, yeah. For the third one here, we've got a, a very uh, nether-centric design here. We've got a nice little glass floor as well with some lava down below. We've got a heaps of brewing stands. We've got our cauldrons, of course, and some soul lanterns as well. And for this last one, we have a 
desert themed one with a uh, kind of an annoyingly placed uh, little nether wart farm here. You can't really walk on it. Um, it's a bit annoying, but uh, yeah, just kind of, still kind of a cool design, I guess. Next up, we've got another four brewing designs, okay? These ones are, you know, we got two aesthetic and then two practical with this first one here being an aesthetic design. We've got a nice little layout on the right, another nice little layout on the left. That's all I'm gonna say. Here's the second aesthetic design. Once again, just some nice layouts. We've got like a hanging little, uh, you know, supported shelf design here. We've got our one with the water, uh, you know, storage on the left. Pretty cool. And now for the more efficient designs that are still, uh, you know, pretty aesthetic, but we've just basically utilized more storage and more brewing stands basically in these ones. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. And for the final one, once again, another efficient design over here. We've got uh, basically just racks of brewing stands. We've got heaps of barrels, heaps of chests, and a little bit of uh, farmage as well. For this next one, we have another little bit of a leafy bridge design. We've got a very like overgrown style uh, leaf roof up here. And we've just got a simple little bridge design on the side here. We've got fence gates. We've got uh, pillars that don't go all the way down to the bloody floor. I hate that. On to even more bridge designs. These ones being a little bit more nice. This first one here being a, uh, I don't really know, but it's kind of in the same level as the surrounding ground. And then we actually have this little area here where a boat can sail through. And then we also have some little doors where people can walk through as well, which is just a really cool feature for a bridge. For the next bridge here, we've got a, uh, a natural bridge. So basically I just used Voxel Sniper to make an arched uh, design here out of some dirt and grass. And I just speckled a whole bunch of random details everywhere. We got glow fricking, whatever these are called, glow berries. We've got roots, we've got dripstone, we've got custom trees. And yeah, kind of cool, kind of weird. That's it. Next up, we have a, yet again, another leafy uh, roof bridge design. This time it's uh, actually arched and yeah, it's um, using oak wood as well, which is pretty cool and definitely very lush. And for the final bridge for now, we have actually an underwater bridge, which I have since learned is actually called a tunnel. Um, Yeah, I don't know why I called this an underwater bridge. I'm kind of an idiot, but uh, yeah, very cool. Very uh, inefficient and, uh, you know, not very practical, but looks cool. Next up, we're moving on to a campsite design. This one is a very like kind of large campsite. We've got two very detailed tents. We've got, uh, you know, a storage pile. We've got an ore pile. We've got a big old campsite campfire, whatever it's called with a cauldron above. We've got a log pile. We've got a cart over here. And we also have a little bit of a horse stable too. Here's a castle I built in a very old video where I made a castle in one hour, 10 minutes and one minute. With this one obviously being the one hour castle, we've got, uh, you know, just a couple of towers on each corner. We've got walls between those and we've got a little bit of a keep design on the inside as well, which, um, yeah, kind of cheated. I didn't really add an interior to that, but, um, you know, we're not going to talk about that. And just as a little bonus, I'm not really counting this as any actual builds in this video, but this is the 10 minute castle and this is the one minute castle. Uh, be sure to check out that video if you want to watch me build these. It is very old though, I will warn you. Next up is another castle that definitely took way longer than one hour to build. This probably took around maybe eight to 10 hours to completely design and is a hundred percent one of my most all time time favorite builds. I love that it's just in an ocean as well. It looks so nice. It would take way too long to showcase this here. So I'm just going to say, you know, I have a full tutorial video on this on my channel. Be sure to go check it out. I think it's called like Ultimate Castle Base or something like that. So if you want to build this, check that out. Next up, we have a cave base design. This one is actually a very old build. And I know that because I have TNT blocks in here, which actually turn into little uh, like crates in the Stay True texture pack, which is the texture pack I used to use uh, a very long time ago when I first started out. But yeah, we have a little bit of a cave base. I don't know what this this area is in here, like a lush little design. We've got a nether portal. We've got uh, a single smoker, not very useful. We've got storage, enchanting, crafting, farms. That's it, mate. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different decorated cave designs with this first one here being in a dungeon theme where we've got some hanging spawners. We've got spider webs everywhere and then a big dungeon door entrance thing too. The next cave design here is an overgrown theme. This was actually built before the uh, lush caves came out. Well, I'm pretty sure it was. I think I came back and added these glowberries in. In. Uh, but yeah, just like a bit of a little pond and uh, very detailed and cool. I don't know. And this one is 100% my favorite cave design here. It's like a pirate themed where we've got the ocean, uh, you know, theoretically coming in from over here. We've got like a little bit of a coral pond. We've got a big palm tree here. We've got like a little balcony thing. And we also have this nice little opening here with uh, some leaves and uh, the light coming through there too, which is pretty nice. Next up, we have some more uh, weird house designs from my AI video. This time, these ones being made by by ChatGPT. The previous one was made by Google Bard. Once again, if you want to watch me build these monstrosities, um, check out the video. I think it's called like, uh, you know, just search disruptive builds AI video something, you know. 
And actually, forgot in that video as well, I made a well um, that was made by ChatGPT and Bard, um, and this was the ChatGPT one. Very strange, very weird, um, very ugly, yeah. Next up, we have a couple of little designs that I'm all just going to, uh, you know, technically classify as one build just because they're very small, and these were all built by Extra Builds. I take no credit. This one is a little bit of a lush, kind of overgrown enchanting area. The next one here is a really decorated uh, hanging lantern kind of lamppost design for like a village or something like that, where we've also got some plants as well, a very nice design. And for this final one here, made by Extra, we have a simple little tree design. Next up, we have another four builds that I take absolutely no credit for. These were all, once again, made by Extra builds, and uh, they're just a couple of chimney designs that uh, I personally don't think fit uh, the houses very well. They're mainly meant to just showcase the actual chimney design, which is actually very nice. This one's like a granite one. Over here, we have a stone brick one. Over here, we have a wood one, which personally I don't like. Sorry, Extra. And then over here, we have have a brick one, which uh, once again is kind of weird. Um, yeah, I don't really know what's going on there. It looks kind of like a... Next up, we have a church design that I created with extra builds, and I don't think I have showed this anywhere before. Maybe I have, I don't know. Off to the right, we've got a little bit of a graveyard. Actually, I'm pretty sure I built this on a live stream a very long time ago. I don't know why I remembered that, but uh, yeah, a very spooky and nice interior. I love these like big supporting beams. Next up, we have another church with this one being built, I believe, with uh, uh, bit Gardener, a retired builder, but he was definitely a very good builder, way better than me. Uh, and this was a collaboration with him that actually looks very, very shit, and it is basically all my fault. I don't know what's going on with this area here, and this looks absolutely crap, man. The interior is very nice because I'm pretty sure Bit Gardener was the one that made basically all of it. This build is the Devil's Bridge, which is in uh, some place somewhere. It actually exists, and I basically just remade it in Minecraft. I did take a little bit of artistic liberty by adding some vines and nice lush stuff to it, but yeah, a very cool and interesting, definitely unique bridge as well. This next build is uh, basically one I just entirely created for a thumbnail that I never actually ended up using at all. We've got a massive, ginormous custom tree design in the middle here, and that is just entirely surrounded by these nice circular farms. A very nice thumbnail. I don't remember why I didn't end up using it. Um, I'm pretty sure I just used some other picture, but uh, yeah, kind of cool. Next up, we have a cliff-based design, a very small one. I honestly, I also have no idea how you get into this base, and I can't remember if I built this or someone else did. Actually, that is Blue Xander's head right there, so it might have been him that built this. But yeah, pretty nice interior. I actually really like this. Yeah, this is definitely not my build. I wouldn't have done uh, something as detailed and interesting as this. We've got a nice little bunk bed design. We've got some tables. We've got an aquarium, and we have a little head shelf. Now, this one's actually a cliff base that I designed entirely. As you can see here, we've got a big elevator down below that can shoot you up to the first floor. I'm not going to do a full tour of of this, but I do have a tutorial of this on my channel, so be sure to check it out if you want to just, uh, you know, have a more in-depth look and or even build it for yourself. This next build is a bit of a cliff upgrade. It's just kind of, you know, we just wanted to make the surrounding cliff look a little nicer, so we added, uh, you know, just a bunch of little details, and we also even added this little cave design with a, uh, I don't know what this is meant to be, like a little treasure room or something like that. Uh, I have no idea. This next build here is actually uh, based on an IRL farm, you know, a farm from real life that being a coffee farm, and I just basically used reference to try and uh, mimic that picture as much as I could in Minecraft, and so I ended up using sweetberry bushes for the actual coffee plants, and we just have nice rows of them and heaps of details too. This next build is my compact farm, the actual second version of it. I don't know where the first version is. We might get to that in this video, but yeah, we just have this giant structure here, and it just contains a bunch of little crop fields. It's not very efficient, uh, but it is very aesthetic, and uh, yeah, definitely nice looking, and this actually does have a full tutorial on my channel. If you want to watch it and build it for yourself, go check it out. It's called uh, Compact Farm V2. Next up, we have like a little cozy campsite or actually like an area of someone's backyard that I saw on Reddit and basically just wanted to rebuild for myself. We have like a little fence design in the back and then we have this like recessed kind of uh, pit here with some chairs and a little campfire too. Just kind of a nice little backyard decoration for sure, mate. This next build is actually a uh, cottage design that I built. It also does have a full tutorial video on my channel. It's called... Uh, uh, yeah, aesthetic cottage, and uh, yeah, it's just a very simple little build. Upstairs, what have we got? I don't remember, just uh, a bunch of random stuff. Yeah, kind of a cool little house if you like cottages. Next up, we have the Cove Dock. Once again, based on an image from Reddit, actually a 3D render of like an area that looks basically like this, and I just recreated it in Minecraft. We've got a nice little dock that surrounds this area. It also leads up to this build up here, and then we have a lighthouse over here, a palm tree, and yeah, just a couple little neat details. Next up, we have a dark medieval path design 
design. I did a lot of these like kind of level builds where we start off at level one, obviously being the most basic. Then we have level two, level three over here where we actually introduce some trees and then level four over here where we've got, you know, just the uh, the best design that I could make. Basically, we've got a nice textured pathway, a couple of custom trees, a couple of details. Yeah, pretty cool little uh, dark medieval path. Next up, we have four simple little decoration designs with this first one here being a very detailed little stone pond. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Nice little detail to add to a village or in your backyard or something. I don't know. The second one here is a raised garden bed. We've got this nice little design kind of encasing it. And then we have, of course, just, you know, the garden up here. For the third little decoration, we have a, uh, you know, uh, a storage pile or something like that. Um, just a bunch of chests and barrels. And for the final little mini decoration, we just have a simple bit of a crop farm that's actually raised up one block and has this nice little kind of casing around it too. Next up, we have a decorative garden design. Honestly, I can't remember if I helped Extra build this or not. I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did. But yeah, we've got this nice little like walled off garden here that's surrounded by a cliff kind of uh, hilly area. We've added heaps of leaves to this, heaps of details everywhere. And yeah, basically it's just a little um, farm design. Yeah. This one is a pretty old build. It's a desert base that I created with Extra once again. Uh, yeah, this is a very nice base. I love this like little oasis we got along the outside here. We've got a bridge going over that too. And then of course that just leads to this basically uh, mansion building here. This next one is another desert house design. This one being another four levels kind of uh, post. Uh, this is level one. I don't know where level two and three have gone, but this is level four over here. Basically the idea is we just have the same shape as over there, but we've just added heaps of details to it. We've had a little exterior staircase, you know, just details everywhere. I don't think we add an interior. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, another nice little bit of a smaller base design for you once again if you live in the desert. For this next one, we have a simple little desert oasis. So once again, if you're living in the desert and you want to spruce up your surrounding landscape, add a little oasis design. Looks so nice, dude. Another bloody desert build for you. This one's actually the biggest build of the video so far. We've got this massive upgraded desert village design here that I built with extra builds, of course. But yeah, we just upgraded a heap of the existing village buildings. Next up, we've got a, uh, a bit of a dock design. You're going to see quite a few docks throughout this video because I love building them, man. I don't know what it is about them. I just love it. This one, I'm pretty sure is a bit of an older build, but uh, still very nice. We've got this like kind of uh, platform area here with a trading area. Over to this side, we've got a very, very nice crane design. I actually love this and I might yoink this for uh, in the future. Here's another couple of dock designs. Uh, this one being, once again, another like, you know, level one two, three, four kind of situation. I definitely went very, very light on the level one here. I spent a lot of time on this one. Once again, level two and level three are gone. This is level four here. We've got a nice dark oak dock that leads out to a trading building similar to the previous one. And also we have this like nice roofed fishing area here. The next couple of builds are going to be uh, basically drug farms. And this first one here is uh, the devil's lettuce. So we've got like a bit of an indoor hydroponic setup here with these nice sea lantern kind of things in the roof here. We've got like a power a box thing. I don't know. We've got a shelf design and then of course just rows of, uh, you know, the devil's lettuce. This next build here is uh, basically meant to be emulating the meth lab in the van from Breaking Bad. So uh, basically it's just the interior. The exterior is uh, yeah, just a box. Don't worry about that. But here's the setup. You know, we've got uh, the areas where you, uh, you know, make the, the stuff. For the third drug farm we've got the poppy field. Obviously, if you didn't know, poppy seeds I believe make heroin. And uh, yeah, this is just a big old poppy farm here. And for the final drug farm, we have a cocaine. So these are meant to be coca plants here and they're just kind of set up in rows and those coca plants then get processed in this building here, uh, theoretically into cocaine. That's about as far as my knowledge goes on that. Um, yeah, you know, not really into drugs. That's not cool. Don't do it, you know. This next build, uh, like the circular farm design from earlier, uh, is mainly just meant to be used for a thumbnail that I never used. I spent hours and hours building this. My god, dude, I remember. And I didn't even end up using it. Um... Yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes. Next, we're taking a look at a couple of enchanting designs, with this first one here being based in a uh, ruined tower. Uh, it kind of sucks, obviously, this doesn't reach full level 30. I mean, you could make it reach full level 30, obviously, if you just added more bookshelves, but the aesthetic might be a little bit kind of ruined. But yeah, for the next one here, we have an overgrown themed one where we've just got heaps of like custom trees kind of dangling over this, and then all of the bookshelves kind of situated in those bushes. Yeah, kind of cool design. For the next one here, we have it uh, basically embedded 
located in the side of a cave. Um, yeah, it's also a little bit overgrown too. Um, nothing else much to say about it, to be honest. And for the fourth one, we just have a simple little, uh, basically interior setup design here. We've got these big, like, O shapes. We've got barrels, of course, for storing your lapis and books. And just as an added bonus, I don't think I actually included this in the post. Um, but yeah, this one's like a bit of a gazebo style. We've got, like, a leafy roof. And then, of course, all of the bookshelves as the walls. Uh, yeah, kind of cool. Next up, we're taking a look at a total of five end portal upgrades with this first one here being like a floating uh you know i don't even know over the void kind of design we've got these floating lights which is a pretty cool design and then like some ruined bridges leading up to that as well i actually lied in the previous clip we only have four end portal designs my bad but this next one here is obviously uh the lush end portal so we're of course in a lush uh you know cave biome and uh i just added this nether portal here obviously you could add this into a an, an existing nether portal in survival or whatever it would take a long time to do but would definitely look really cool. This next one is a ruined end portal design and this one's meant to be you know kind of taken place in the actual existing stronghold and I've just made it look like it is a bit ruined and overgrown so we've got like an actual pond underneath this here instead of uh, lava. A nice little detail is like the water running out in these little cracks throughout the stone here and we've also taken out a big chunk of the wall here and added some overgrown stuff. And for the final end portal design we have one where it's made to look kind of uh, you know inside of a base or we've kind of just fortified the exterior around this. We've also encapsulated it in some wooden little decorations here and then of course just added some storage and some crafting and stuff on the sides. Next up we have four entrance designs with the first one here being like a copper vault. Obviously not a uh, you know a usable entrance but something cool you could do is have some like hidden piston design that'll like maybe retract some of these blocks so you can actually use it as an entrance. This next one is definitely my favorite of the four entrance designs with this one being like an iron vault. I love the like kind of uh, spoke like wheel design of this. I don't know. It just looks really cool. This next one is the natural entrance design where we just have this like big cave kind of carved out on the side of this cliff and then that obviously leads through here into uh, theoretically a base or I don't know a mine or something. Yeah. And for the final entrance design here we have like a spruce one. So it's similar to the previous natural one where it's embedded in the side of the cliff but we just have like this massive spruce door. I don't know what happened to this here. I guess it's meant to be like a window but uh, yeah. This next build is a very small one and it is basically just an escape pod. As you can see, if we turn it to nighttime here, it looks like we're in space and we've like, you, you know, uh, just escaped from a space station or a bigger ship or something. Next up, we're in the extra segment of my warps list, which is, uh, you know, just how I'm going through this video if you haven't realized yet. Basically, I'm just typing in warp and then, uh, you know, the letter. So right now we're at E. And if we scroll down, we're in the extra section with the first one here being the extra bridge. Uh, you know, obviously entirely made by him. Quite a nice little simple bridge design. This next one here is the extra cabin. Um, very kind of weird. I don't know if I like this front wall design. It's not very detailed. Side wall's a little bit better. We actually have some windows here. And then the back, um, yeah, we always, we just don't talk about the back of the builds. And then over to the left, we just have this massive custom tree thing. I don't know why, but yeah, and a very crazy chimney as well. The next one here is the extra market stall with the items that it's selling. Uh, I don't know, you know, gamer items. I don't know what that's meant to be. But yeah, we just have, you know, a bunch of various items. And for the final extra specific build we have the extra base i actually remember this is the first ever build that i collaborated on with extra he actually built most of it but i did end up helping out i think i built this nether portal here yes this does look like my design i also helped with this pond design he built the entirety of the house but yeah this build means a lot to me you know it's the start of our building and uh friendship basically and overall is quite a nice base design as well we are now in the f category which means a lot of farms okay and this first one here being four farms with basically aesthetic versus efficient with this first one here being the aesthetic one we have like this tiered design here with a nice little pathway between them here's the next aesthetic design we've got like this nice little roofed section here and then we have our crops down below i don't know why there's a third aesthetic one usually i just did two aesthetic and two efficient but um yeah this one's quite nice i actually really love this design where we have the surrounding crops we've got a little pond in the middle with a pathway around that and then a little bit of a custom tree and a bench too and now for the two more efficient designs here we have a little bit of a field layout obviously very small but can be easily expanded and for the 
final efficient one, one that is actually, you know, decently efficient. We have a button here that links up to all of these dispensers that'll let a water bucket out and just basically push all the crops down into the hoppers and into the chest. Next up, we have a little bit of a farming field design and something that actually makes this stand out and look really nice is using the coarse dirt as basically just the ground in here. That ground also just separates all of these fields and leads up to a, a little bit of a composter with a lid design as well on that. Yeah, very nice little field design. Next up, of course, another farm, this time in a greenhouse. So heading on inside, the whole ground here is just basically carrots. And uh, we also have a little bit of a composter and some uh, flowers as well. This next farm here is a hydroponic design. I love this design. Definitely among one of my most favorite farm designs. We've got a nice little lamp design. I think I said design like 600 times at this point. But uh, yeah, end rods with levers pointing in towards those. A very nice light. And then we of course just have shelves and flowers and crops. Everything everywhere. Next up, once again, another level 1 to level 4 type of situation. This time we actually have all of the levels. And I'm just going to count them all as one build. So here's level 1. Level 2 over yonder. You know, we just added a fence around it. Level 3, same thing. Just a bit of a bigger fence. And then level 4, um, yeah. Uh, just the same thing. Another fence. I don't think I ended up posting this because it's kind of shit. Next up, we have a farm house this time. So we have, of course, our farming fields. And then we have the farmhouse at the back. We've also got a little bit of a horse stable. We've got sugarcane farms back here too. Heading on inside, we've got a nice little decorated interior. I believe I made a tutorial video for this on my channel. It's one of the more recent tutorials and I think it's just called uh, Farmhouse. So yeah, just search that up and you'll find it if you wanted to build this for yourself. Here's another farmhouse, obviously uh, in the level one to four type of deal. This being obviously level one. Yeah, kind of overboard on the newbie aspect of this one. Here's level two. We've introduced a bit of a sloped roof design. Level three adds more various details where we've added these little sticking out knobs, some lanterns, some, uh, you know, fences. And the final level, level four, we've added more details, you know, some signs, some trap doors. We've added this little exterior farm. And yeah, just a nice, cute little uh, farmhouse design. Here is yet another farmhouse design. This one entirely created by Extra Builds, so I take no credit for this. I think I did actually help him with this giant freaking crop field around this. But yeah, a pretty cool house design. It's got a very, very tall roof. We've got a couple of, you know, roofed sections on the outside as well. A nice little area to store your hay, a balcony, and another hay storage. I don't know if there's an interior. No, there isn't. Here are some more farming methods this time, with this one being uh, another field. Um, yeah, very basic, very similar to the field I've showed before, so that's all I'm going to show. For the second farming method, we have another hydroponic design. This one, uh, honestly, not uh, as good as the previous hydroponic one, in my opinion. And for the final farming method, we just have an indoor one, which is basically just situated inside of a base design that I made. And yeah, we just have two little crop farms on either side and some storage and that's it. These next couple of builds are very old. I'm just going to classify them as one build in total for this video. But yeah, here is a like nether themed one. Basically, they're all exactly the same design, just using different blocks. Here's another nether themed one. Over here, we have our medieval one. And then this one, we just have a wooden uh, medieval theme one, I guess. Next up, it's another farm, of course. But this time, it's actually situated in the water, which is pretty cool. And this is actually emulating an existing like farming method that was used by the ancient Aztecs. I cannot remember what it's called, but if you search floating gardens, you'll basically find, uh, you know, the reference image that I used to build this, basically. Next up, we have this nice little floating island build here, where we've got a, a bit of a house design situated on it. We've got a crop field on the outside here, and then a little bit of a river here that leads down to a massive waterfall, which is, you know, basically the way you'd enter and exit this place. Not very efficient, but yeah, kind of cool design. Next up is a very small build, but, uh, oh, dude, I don't know what it is about this, but I just love it. Having the god rays hitting this thing, uh, but yeah, basically it's just a forest shrine. We've got this like weird little structure here, and then we just have some chairs and candles around it with a lectern. The idea behind this, you know, it's like a cult thing. I don't know. There's a guy standing here. You got people sitting and worshiping this uh, stone thing. I don't know. These next couple of builds here are just some fountain designs. I believe I built these. I'm pretty sure I did, but here is a stone fountain design. Off to the other side here, we've got a wooden fountain design. I don't know what happened to like this arm of the fountain here, and uh, then we also have this thing. I don't know what this is. I didn't build this. Um, next up, we have a frozen base design. I don't remember who built this. I'm pretty sure I did and maybe extra did. But yeah, the idea is, you know, you have a base that's underneath the ice here. Um, I don't know how you get down into it, but uh, yeah. I mean, we can probably just break the glass to have a look in here. We got enchanting, bloody everything you need at least. Uh, yeah, kind of cool. Next up, we've got another level one to four type of situation. This time just being a generic interior design with this being level one right here. Over yonder 
Wonder is level two. We've just got it uh, elevated a little bit. Actually, I just realized that this is meant to be a furnace kind of room interior. Um, but yeah, this is level three here. And the final one, level four. We've got a, a very nice setup. I actually really love this. I utilized this recently in my hardcore series where we've got smelters that'll automatically feed into some storage chests. And we also have this neat little design under here too. Next up, we have another more recent build. Uh, once again, if you can classify last year as uh, recent, but this was also built with extra builds. And uh, basically it's just like a bit of a courtyard slash garden thing. We've got a different garden in each section. Over here we've got like, oh my God, what is that? Uh, don't worry about that. But over here we've got like some little custom trees. Over here we have a big custom tree and some benches. Over here a little bit of a waterfall design. And then for the final one, uh, I don't know, just like a little flower field. Next up, we're taking a quick look at a bunch of different gate designs because we're now in the G section. So gate number one here is the Japanese one. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. We got a lot of like very detailed prismarine roof blocks going on here and like a very interesting wall design here where you could actually open this up and pass through if you wanted to. The second gate design here is a nether themed one, uh, one that was built before deep slate blocks were added as I don't really like blackstone that much anymore. It's just a very dark block. I don't know. But yeah, overall a pretty cool, simple little design. We got like these little towers with fire and uh, yeah, pretty cool. The third gate design is a bit of a jungle one. Uh, yeah, it's like got a cool gate design in the middle that's actually like partially opened. You could design this so it's closed or you could even put, you know, fence gates across here if you wanted to. And then we also have this nice little like wall design here, like a palisade style wall. And for the fourth gate, we have the medieval one. Uh, yeah, all of these builds are very old, so they're kind of weird looking. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was going through like an experimental phase. Uh, yeah, but still kind of cool design overall, I guess. These next two gates are a little bit more recent and uh, they're actually a lot larger as well. So this first one here is the uh, stone slash wood medieval one. And for the next one, we have uh, yet again another nether themed one, this time actually using deep slate blocks. And I really love this like kind of inlay using the uh, whatever block this is, warped high fey, what I, I don't know how you pronounce that. Onto the final four gates, at least for a little while. There's probably going to be plenty more gates. And so this first one here is the wooden medieval themed one. We've got like a nice little arched kind of entrance design here, another like risen portcullis thing and some very interesting towers. The next gate is the desert themed one. I really love this gate, dude. Just this like nice mellow kind of slope here. We've got some interesting blocks on the inlay here with some emerald. Next up is the ruined gate design. So yeah, obviously this was uh, once a big stone gate that is now just, uh, you know, remnants of its former self. Something that I love doing in ruined builds is adding like a little campsite in it. Like people have kind of moved in and are still using the structure. And for the final gate, not really much of a gate as it doesn't really stop anything from going in or out. Uh, but yeah, it's the natural gate or just, I don't know, arch, I guess you can call it. Next, we're on to uh, some more crop farms. This time, a giant crop farm. As you can see, if we actually step down here, you can truly just get the scale of this thing. It is massive. These fields are huge. We've got some uh, pretty, you know, under detailed buildings here, but this build was meant to be viewed from far away. And next we have a giant ruined tower or kind of like a reclaimed tower being reclaimed by nature. We've got like a massive spruce tree that's kind of just bursted out the side here and it's going in and out of the tower and fully, you know, coming out at the top here and coming out at the sides as well. Yeah, pretty cool build if you live in a spruce forest and want to make it look nice. Uh, yeah, also once again, we just, we never talk about the back of the builds, okay? Next up, we have the grain field. Um, yeah, I don't know what this is. Oh, dude, this build is a doozy. Probably one of my most favorite base designs I've made, which also does have a very lengthy tutorial video on my channel if you want to build this for yourself. It actually has two variants of an interior, with this one here being the Grand Library interior, basically just, you know, filled with bookshelves everywhere. And this version over here being the actual survival base interior. Once again, if you want to make either of these interiors as well as the actual exterior of the base, just, uh, you know, be sure to check out my channel. It's called Ultimate Survival Base Tutorial. Next is another level one to four kind of build that I'll classify as uh, just one build. So here's level one, very simple. Um, yeah, also it's a brick slash granite path, by the way. There's level two. Level three over here, we've actually introduced a little bit more, you know, texture. Level two, we just introduced some shape. Level three, we actually added some trees and bushes and other details and some texture as well. And then level four, we take it to the absolute max. We add custom trees, light posts, storage blocks, rocks, you know, just the whole nine yards in here, mate. Next up, we have a couple of hidden entrance designs that I honestly don't even remember building. And this first one here, you know, the base entrance is, uh, I think it's somewhere up around here. And the idea behind this one is that we just simply have a very hidden button that probably no one would ever find on the back of this tree here. You press it and it opens up the base. This next hidden base entrance design is not using a button, but instead a hopper. And it's actually the entrance design that I've used in pretty much all of my underground base designs. Basically, you just throw something on top of this grass block 
and it opens up the base. This next secret entrance design is somewhere in this water. I'll give you two seconds to find it. One, two. Okay, that's it. It's over here. That's right. This one doesn't use any redstone at all. And it's hidden basically completely with a lily pad just completely out in the open. And how you actually get into this is you have to go over here and go into swimming mode and then just swim down the hole. And for the second hidden base design, this one's actually in the ocean again and is a little bit better than the previous one in my opinion. The entrance is actually all the way down here behind this seagrass right here. So once again, you got to enter swimming mode, swim swim through and then I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a trap door. Okay, there we go. And then that's how you get into your base. Next up, we've got a hobbit hole base design that I honestly can't remember if I built by myself or with extra. We'll just give him credit. Why not? Uh, so we got these cute little farm designs on the outside that are nice and roofed. And then the actual main base is on the side of this cliff heading on inside. It's a pretty simple and small base layout. Nothing too crazy. This next build is from my IRL farms series and it is a hop farm meant to look like kind of the crops that you'd be using to make beer, you know, in real life. And instead, I've just actually made some like glowberry vines that are basically just floating in midair. I did that with world edits and I also made a cool secondary version over here that you could make in survival that actually has like a roof you can place the hops on or glowberries, whatever they're called. This one here is a bit of a simple horse stable design, a dual horse stable if you will, because uh, you know, obviously on the left here we've got a uh, horse and on the right we've got the same. In the middle we have our entrance here that leads into a little bit of storage, you know, for some carrots or whatever you give to horses. Honestly, I don't know what that is. Next up, it's another level one to level four kind kind of type deal, you know? This is level one here. Very, very weird looking. Level two, we've added a bit more of a normal roof, adding some overhang there and uh, yeah. Level three, we've added even more details. We've got some nice little window designs, some buttons and just various other details. And level four, the final level, we've added a nice little exterior area, even more details and a uh, bit of a textured roof as well. This next build is definitely a fan favorite. Uh, it was loved by many on the old Instagram when that existed and basically it's some modular house wall designs. We've got four in total, this being the first one here, just like a kind of standard wooden theme. And the idea behind this is that you can just easily repeat this like, you know, around all of the walls of your house and just have a nice looking house. The second one here is like a darker themed one where we've used dark oak wood and also some uh, whatever these are called as well. The third one here is a bit more of a detailed design, kind of similar to the first one, except, you know, it's just got more levels of depth. We've added like some bushes as well and just overall much better and nicer. And for the final one, we have a predominantly stone themed one with with some nice wooden accents in the windows, leaves again, and yeah. These next three builds are actually all houses, uh, kind of through the ages, with this one here being the Stone Age themed one. This was a very fun video I made. I believe it was like a kind of tutorial for each house in the same video or something like that. I honestly can't remember, but you can find it. It's called Houses of the Ages on my channel. Moving through the ages, we're now at the medieval age. So here is a nice heavily detailed, well, not actually really that heavily detailed uh, medieval house. You know, pretty simple. We'll take a quick little look at the interior. Nothing too crazy. And for the final house of the ages, we have actually my first ever modern house that I ever made. A pretty bog standard, uh, you know, modern house design. Nothing too crazy and, you know, unique going on here. Heading on inside, the interior is not very good either. So honestly, I would not build this house for yourself. And this house, I have no recollection uh, either building or helping extra build. So I believe he built this entirely by himself. It does look like one of his crazy roof designs. But yeah, um, honestly, it's all right. Not too big on the inside. I don't know why. I'm I'm critiquing every one of his builds whenever they come up. I'm sorry, Extra, but this is actually a very nice house exterior. Very detailed, very nice. Next up, we have the Ice Base, a very early collaboration with Extra Builds. This was built a very long time ago, but the entrance here is quite nice. You know, you kind of just sail in through this little entrance and you can park up your boat here at the dock or you can uh, use the old boat rack, one of the uh, original designs I came up with. And then heading on inside, you've got a nice little path to follow out throughout the entire base. It is basically just carved out of a giant freaking iceberg. I think I have a full showcase video of this on my channel. It is very old. I think it's called like Ice Base or something, but yeah. Next up, we have another couple of interior build designs. Uh, you know, too aesthetic, too efficient. With this first one here being an aesthetic one and very nicely detailed. I love this wall over here. I need to start doing more of this stuff for my interiors again, dude. It just looks so nice. And here's the second aesthetic one, a little bit more focused on the storage side. We've got a bunch more chests, a nice little armor stand and a, a bit of a redstone lamp behind that too. And next up, we have the design design that's more focused on efficiency, but still kind of looks nice at the same time. We've got a nice furnace wall and storage wall on this side. And for the final efficiency focused one, we have yet another, you know, uh, storage wall over this side, furnaces and crafting on this side. Next up, we have a whole bunch of kind of small interior designs, a lot of them. This was a collaboration with Cryptozoology once again, and I have a whole video of this on my channel showcasing each one and how to build all of them. I'm just going to kind of fly past all of these and just do a quick 
little look at all of them. Uh, yeah, a lot of very small builds, but very nice builds, and it was very fun building with Cryptozoology. Of course, he is one of my favorite builders to build with. And yeah, we just got heaps of little bed designs, tables, kitchens, all that kind of stuff. Check out the video, goddammit. We spent a lot of time on it. Next up is another level one to level four type deal. There is a lot of these. Oh, I love building them. Uh, you know, they did really well on Instagram, so that's why there's a lot of them. With this first one here, obviously, uh, you know, just kind of crap. Level two, we've upgraded a little bit. We've added, uh, you know, some more storage and stuff. Nothing too crazy. Level three, we've added even more height variation and just a bunch more details. And level four, the maximum aesthetic you can get. Um, well, I can get at least. I should also probably credit extra. I believe he did help me with these. And yeah, very nice interior right here, mate. Next up, we have even more interiors because we're obviously at the eye section now. And we have a lot of interiors here that I'm just going to quickly fly by. So this one here is the kitchen. Over here is the, I don't know, just kind of a nice room. Next up, we've got the storage room. This one here is brewing and crafting combined together. Over yonder is our storage room. Another storage room, more storage. Um, I don't know what this is meant to be. And then finally, we have our indoor crop farm. Oh, holy crap, dude. This build brings back some memories. This took hours and hours to do. And it's actually a recreation of the Irithal Bridge from Dark Souls 3. I made this quite a while ago and I just, yeah, used that image as basically just reference. I set my teleport point to right here. So I teleport back here every time and just basically mimic the picture and make it look as close to that as I could. But yeah, once you kind of fly out here, it all gets kind of messed up. Next up, we have another IRL farm with this one being a chocolate farm. So we've got like the uh, cocoa trees or whatever they are by, back there. And then this area here is where they got all collected into like pits and I don't know what they do with them, like mash them with their feet or something. I, I have no idea. And next up, we have another IRL farm with this one being the fish farm. If you didn't know, this is actually how my like most fish farms in real life are made. I don't know. They're just big squares filled with water. All of the fish are in there. And honestly, I don't know anything else about them from that point on. Next up is one of my more recent base designs that I've made. And basically it is a modern house just entirely situated on its own little private island here. This entire island was handmade from scratch. It took absolutely forever. I wanted to detail it really nicely with just like this big grass mound. We've got like some big boulders and stones everywhere. And then for the actual house here, we have a modern house. Dude, I actually forgot how nice the interior for this is. It's so like nice and spacious. It just gives you really like just modern house vibes. I don't know. Over here kind of falls apart a little bit. I don't know. It's hard to work around big windows. And then upstairs is, uh, yeah, we got, you know, bedroom, more stuff. I believe this was built with XRA as well. He deserves credit for this. And dude, this nice little like kind of grass area here and the solar panels. Dude, it's just such a nice base design. Here's another collaboration with XRA Builds. Basically a tiny little town situated on its own little island thing. We've only got a couple of houses, a nice little layout here with a staircase that leads up to him. We've got a bit of a farm over on this side, a dock down here, and even a little boat design too. These next couple of builds are going to be some Japanese ideas with this first one here being a Tory gate. Dude, I don't know how many of these I've built in my life. It is insane the amount of these I've built, but this one's definitely one of the more nicer ones as I believe Extra did help me with it. For the next Japanese idea, we have a bit of a mini Zen garden here or a giant Zen garden, however you want to look at it. But yeah, we basically just have like a sand side. We've got a grass side with some bamboo. We've got some rocks. We've got a little bridge and heated pools as well. If you want to do this for yourself, simply just put a slab over a campfire down below and you have like what looks like some steaming water. Next up, we have a Sakura or cherry blossom tree that was built before the cherry blossom trees were actually added to the game. Obviously, I would use those leaves and that wood nowadays. But at the time, we uh, did what we could to get by. And for the final Japanese idea, we have a very uh, kind of weird bridge design. I don't know how I feel about it nowadays, but um, yeah, it's it's all right. This next build was entirely built by Extra Builds. Once again, we've got a nice little island here. Actually, I'm pretty sure this is my island and he might have copied and pasted this. I have no idea, but he built this entire house. Very nice Japanese style house here. I love the roof on this. It just looks so Japanese or Chinese, whatever kind of place that is. I don't know if that's racist. I'm so sorry. But uh, yeah, once again, no interior. Just don't worry about that. Next up, we have a nice big jungle entrance design. I don't know what it is about this build. I just love it. Having the nice lush green against the harsh stone. We've got this nice little like entrance down into the water and then this entrance would just lead to I don't know what, but yeah, dude, just such a nice build. I love this. This next one, I don't know if anyone has ever seen before. I believe it was also built with extra and it's basically just some jungle ruins. We've got like a nice little bit of water in here. We got some random storage and just, yeah, I don't know what it was meant to be, but uh, it's just ruins now. Next up is another build that uh, I don't know who built. It might have been extra. It might have been Ritz builds. I have no idea, but there's a lot of TNT everywhere. Just ignore that. It's meant for another texture pack. But yeah, over here we have a very odd house design. Once again, I'm sorry. I just don't like this. There's so many details in the roof. It is just weird. And the interior. Oh my God. We're not even 
even going to talk about that. Next up, we have a couple more builds from my, uh, you know, phobia obsessions, with this phobia being kinophobia, which is the fear of large open spaces. And this one here, I don't even know, meant to be like kind of like a big warehouse factory thing that, you know, and this entrance over here would lead to theoretically an even larger area. I don't know if it actually does. No, it doesn't. It's just black concrete. Actually, what is this? What the hell? Next up, we have just a big uh, hallway. I don't know. It's meant to be kind of creepy. I think it was the way that I took the picture of this that made it look like infinite or something or just really big. I don't know. The next build on the menu is the lake base. A base quite aptly named as, uh, you know, it's on the edge of a lake and it's actually embedded in the side of a cliff. And we have this nice big massive front giant window here to, uh, you know, see out and have a nice view of our lake. On the inside, we've got a toggleable light up freaking armor stand thing. We've got storage, we've got crafting, smelting, and a little bedroom in here too. Too. And this next one is uh, basically an upgraded version of the previous base that I made probably like a year later. And yeah, so as you can see, this one is absolutely massive. It is quite uniquely shaped as well. I really like the design of this one. We added a nice little dock on the outside as well. Heading on inside, we've got some modular sections. We've got, you know, crop farms on the left, storage, smelting, enchanting, bedroom, crafting storage, and another crop farm. Next up, we have a little chandelier design. Nothing too crazy, but definitely a really nice build to add into like a grand library or any kind of build that's like like a grand build, I guess, and could use a chandelier. It's a pretty nice design that uses end rods and lanterns as well. And continuing on with the uh, the lighting theme, we have some more lamppost designs, mainly meant for like to be placed in villages, with this first one here being like a royal themed one. I don't know how I feel about the diorite in here nowadays. I'd probably just swap that out for quartz. The next one is a Japanese themed lamppost, and I actually really love this one. It is just, I don't know, it's, it's so like simple and compact, and it just looks so Japanese. I love it, dude. The third one is a bit of a detailed medieval design, which I think is a little bit over the top. You could probably do without these signs here, as it just looks a little bulky up top. And for the fourth one, we have a bit more of a darker medieval themed one. We've got like some offset soul lanterns as well, which is a nice little unique detail. You can, of course, just make these both at the same length if you wanted. Next up, we've got a couple of large bridge designs, with this first one here being yet another Japanese themed one. Dude, the roof on this thing is insane. I love it, dude. I remember this taking a very, very long time to design, and I think it turned out pretty nice. It's very heavily detailed, very Japanese. Yeah, uh, such a good bridge, dude. For the next one, we have another suspension bridge. Honestly, I think I like this one a little bit more compared to the one that I showed previously. For the next one, we have a bit of a ruined bridge, which actually still functions as a bridge. We made this so you can actually still jump across. And for the final large bridge design, we have a royal themed one, which honestly, I don't really like too much nowadays. The arch is just weirdly shaped. The pillar is, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. All right, here's a more recent build I made with my good friend Extra this one did take quite a while to design as we have a couple of different tent designs throughout this. Of course, using our wood accents to keep it nice and detailed. And we also have a massive one over here. I actually really love the way these tents turned out. They're just so nice. And then, yeah, they're all just laid out in, in this like massive, almost like mini village kind of design. These next four builds are going to be some large farm designs with this first one here being just a simple field design. We've got four squares separated by a path with a bunch of storage blocks and composters in between those as well. The second one here is very simple similar to the first, except we have actually added a circular fence around this that, uh, you know, isn't protected from mobs. You could, of course, make this a little bit higher if you wanted it to be. And we also incorporated the water inside of the trapdoors here. Actually, I don't... Yeah, there we go. There's one of them. And the third farm here is actually set up in, like, a little bit of a river design here. So we've got a nice blend of carrots and potatoes on the right side and then on... Actually, that's the left side, sorry. And then on the right side, we have a blend of beetroot and wheat on this side. And for the fourth large farm, we have this four-staged uh, design here where it actually increases in height every layer and we have a little path that runs through them as well. And this next build was actually made for a thumbnail for a video and is kind of like a scaled up version of the third farm over there, if you can see it, where we have like the little river running through the middle with a bunch of bridges crossing over that. And then we have these massive fields of crops on the right and then heaps of house designs on the left as well. Next up, we have one of my all-time favorite builds that I created with my good friend and good builder, Cryptozoology, once again. Honestly, I don't really want to take too much credit for this because he did most of this, I believe. You can probably tell by how nice it looks and how different it looks compared to most of my bases. But yeah, on the outside, we've got a nice little horse stable. And heading on in the inside, we have a nice layout on the first floor here, nice and spacious. And on the second floor, we have a bedroom, crafting, and then in the attic. I'll leave that up to you guys to discover. If you search on the, you know, the old YouTube, just search my name, freaking large farm 
farmhouse design. I got a tutorial and a full showcase of this build. Next up, we have a large waterfall design that I don't really remember making, but I'm pretty sure I was the one who built this. It does look like the kind of waterfall I'd make where it kind of splits off into two channels and down into the bottom. Next up, we have an absolutely massive, fully wooden large bridge design. So similar to the stone bridge I showcased earlier in the video, we have two big arches with a main like pillar kind of thing in the middle. We've got a nice roof section right in the middle, and then we have some lanterns that kind of line the edges of this as well. And then of course, we just have heaps of details along this to keep it nice and lively. Next up, we have another medieval bridge, one that I actually built in a kind of experimental video where I built along with you guys. I kind of wish that video did better because I actually really loved making that, but uh, yeah, it just did not do too well. Honestly, it's a very bulky and kind of flat bridge, but we do have a lot of different details throughout this. We got spruce leaves, we got the nice little pass through that I love, and we also have like a secondary below the bridge walkway here that goes through, and then we have of course the walkway on top as well, which is a pretty unique feature. Next up, we have another level one to four build, except I only have the level one and the level four. I don't know where the other two went, but yeah, this is obviously level one, uh, very over the top, obviously. I don't think anyone builds this crap. And here's the level four. We have the same kind of basic shape design over there, but we've just kind of expanded it, used a different block palette, added a nice little staircase leading up to it, and just a bunch of random little details as well. Here is yet another back rooms uh, kind of build. This one's very simple. I made it to just kind of mimic the original, you know, back rooms picture that everyone's bloody seen before. I think the angle's from like back here or something. I actually made this in a video, I think. What was it called? It's like, just search disruptive builds, liminal spaces, or back rooms or something like that. It's, it's something like that. And here's another build from that video, which is like more of a pool rooms kind of layout. We have like some nice little chairs. We've got, you know, a nice void in the background here that looks ominous and creepy. Next up, we have a couple of low wall designs. So these were specifically made to only be three blocks high, not including the slabs on top. Shut up. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to challenge myself to make some really short walls. And with the first one here, we just have a standard medieval theme. For the next one, we have a nether themed one. I love this like wood inlay with these nice little nether freaking uh, plants under here as well. We got the soul lanterns and some nice buttons as well. This next one is another medieval one, but I kind of made it more of like a sewer or something like that, where we have the water flowing out and down into an iron grate here, or iron trapdoor, I should say. And for the final low wall, we have uh, one that I kind of cheated on. I added like a little central pillar here that goes up four blocks high, but yeah, it's like a desert themed one. Next up, we have an underground lush base design that I created with extra builds, of course. So we've got a nice U-shaped pathway here that leads up to the lush base, in between that being a little waterfall river thing. Heading on inside, we have a bit of a simple layout. We've got some crop farms on the bottom. We have like a little greenhouse here as well. And then heading up the stairs is where all the actual, you know, base stuff is. We've got a little trading hall section. We've got enchanting, brewing, bedrooms, furnaces, crafting, and storage. This build here is actually, well, obviously a marketplace. I honestly cannot remember if I helped build this or not, but I think it was Extra who built this. If I didn't help, I honestly, I don't remember. But yeah, we just have like kind of a town center, like marketplace area. And all of these stalls are just selling different things. You know, we got enchanted books, we got TNT, we got brewing, we got freaking sheep. I don't know. <laughs> I think he just ran out of ideas or something. But yeah, just such like a nice, lively little area. Even over here, we just have like a bunch of random decorations as well. And a little pond as well. Next up, we have a build that I kind of gave up on, but it's meant to be like a Mars themed kind of uh, space base or something. I don't know. Honestly, I think if I kept working on it, it would have turned out pretty nice. But uh, yeah, it was just so much work. I probably, I remember I changed the block palette on this like at least 600 times. But for this little thing right here, I actually did go ahead and expand this into a full little greenhouse kind of build. I still don't really like how it turned out. Not a lot of room for crops in here, but yeah, still a kind of unique and interesting little greenhouse. Next up, we have a little mini kind of decayed medieval bridge. It's meant to look like it's been heavily, you know, used and, and it's just pretty old. And we've kind of shown that throughout all of the texturing that we've used throughout this build. We also have a nice little wooden uh, freaking roof section in the middle here. And uh, yeah, if you need like a little bridge design, definitely a nice one to have. Next up, we have a couple of bridge designs, actually just two in total. Um, and yeah, they're like kind of meant to be the exact same shape with this first one here being the stone one, uh, quite obviously. And we've made it into a little bit of a dam as well, where we have the water pouring out from this side. And at the back here, as you can see, we've risen the uh, water level. And then on this side, it's very low. And yeah, I'll just say we have entered the medieval section. If you have a look here, we're <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of medieval builds throughout this section. And here's the wooden variant of that previous bridge. Um, I do apologize. It's kind of just floating in the open here. But yeah, as you can see, uh, like basically the exact same length and height and shape and everything. Except this time we just have like a nice archway that allows boats to go through. We've got my signature little pass through down here, which I love. And just a couple of neat little details. 
details throughout it as well. Next up, we have a medieval castle base design. One of my more recent tutorials. Um, honestly, I'm just not too happy with how this turned out. I don't know how I feel about the deep slate walls. I was trying for something different, but I just don't think it looks too nice, especially from the interior. It just looks a little weird, but still a very unique and nice base layout. We've got some external smelting and anvils. We've got little farms. Down here, we've got our main storage. Up here, we've got some crop farms, and then this main area is just like the main base. Once again, I've got a tutorial for this on my channel. Be sure to check it out if you want to build it. Next up, we have another goated build, one of my all-time favorites that I built with extra, just this massive medieval dam design. But taking a look down below, we have these massive channels where the water can just pour out from the other side where you can see we have risen it. And then up above that, we have these nice little details here. And then we have the, obviously the main kind of like bridge area where it's just completely roofed. We've got two raised little towers on the sides. And yeah, dude, I just, oh, I don't know what it is about this build. I just love it so much, man. Next up is another one of my builds that I just, I don't know. It just hits so good, man. Just this nice, massive deep slate gate design. We've got this lowered portcullis. And I just love this like deep slate inlay and the deep slate little accents and this roof section. Dude, it's just, it's so good, man. Next up, we have another like kind of level one to four type of build, but it's actually just not that at all. It is basically the same build in different build conditions. So right here, we have the pristine medieval gate. This next one here is the like weathered or ruined one. Basically the second stage of decay where we've just introduced a bunch of texturing to make it look, you know, a little more weathered compared to the previous one. Next up is the third stage of decay. I can't remember what I called it, but in this one, we have taken out a couple of blocks. We've added in some little growth here to make it look, you know, even older and more decayed. And then this final one here is just the completely ruined design. Like I said, in one of my previous builds, I love adding like a little campsite in here. Like people have moved in, you know, just travelers or something like that. And yeah, I love this idea of like having just different stages of the same build. It's so cool, man. Next, we have another medieval gate. This time, instead of using deep slate, we have mainly just used stone and wood. Yeah, so it's a similar kind of scale, but a different shape and design. We've got the like semi-lowered portcullis here. We've got these massive towers with the nice wooden inlay, and we have a nice little walkway between them as well. And next we have a medieval house, a level one to four type of deal, except we only have the level one and level four, with this one obviously being level one. And here's the level four, same premise, obviously, same shape, design, and everything, except we've just made it a whole bunch more detailed and nice to look at. Next up, we have a bit more of a recent build created by myself and Extra Builds, and it's actually based on an image I found on Reddit, like, is actually just a drawing of this nice, like, medieval-themed landscape. And dude, I just love it. It's so detailed. I love the, like, crop fields that leads into a bridge up to these stairs with nice boulders. We've got a waterfall and a river down here, and just leads over to this nice, like, overgrown fence as well. Moving on, we have a medieval lighthouse design. It's completely situated on its own little sand island, surrounded by some jagged rocks, which is, you know, the story behind this lighthouse and why it was built, you know, to warn the uh, ships of the rocks. I don't know. <laughs> I'm literally just talking smack right now, but yeah, we have this nice stone lighthouse design. Next up, we have another build, which I'm pretty sure was a collaboration with Cryptozoology. If not, I was trying to just copy his style. Basically, I cannot remember for the life of me, but yeah, definitely a pretty cool base design. I don't know. Oh, it's just, there's something about it that just looks off. Did I do an interior? It looks like I did. Actually, I think this was a collab. I <laughs> don't, I can't remember. But yeah, down here, we have a nice little like unique kind of more realistic layout with like a kitchen on this side. And then heading up the ladder, we have another floor with just more stuff. And we have this like kind of design here. I really love this, like how it's just open. Next up, we have a medieval merchant building. So yeah, obviously this build is meant to look more like a uh, merchant style building. We've got like a little market stall kind of design on the, on the right side here with some storage stuff. And heading on into this like little exterior part, we have like this nice uh, <coughs> area where you can like trade stuff. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. And heading on inside, I don't think there is an interior. No, there isn't. There isn't even a complete freaking walls in here, man. Jesus Christ. Next up, we have another incomplete build that I honestly wish I completed because I just, I had like such an awesome idea for this, but I just kind of gave up on it because I just couldn't think of where to take it from here. But basically the idea was we we're going to have like some kind of big build here and that just led over to this bridge down into a mine. Dude, it would have turned out so nice if I just stuck with it. But yeah, I don't know. I just thought I'd showcase this because it's definitely a cool idea. Next up is my basically all-time favorite mine entrance I've ever built. It's just got all of the elements that I absolutely love about mine entrances. It's raised above the ground level, so we have a little staircase that leads up to it. It's like kind of this rocky outcrop where it kind of sticks out from the surrounding hill. I don't know how else to describe it. It's perfectly textured. We've got nice wooden details in here. We have like little leaves, of course, scattered around it and just, yeah, 
it's just, it's the perfect mine entrance, man. And next up is another medieval mine entrance that I tried to make completely different from the previous one. So it's actually on ground level here. And I tried to make it just look as different and unique as possible. We've got these nice roofed like kind of entrances here. This one here is meant to be for the mine carts. And this one is meant to be for like people and stuff. And we just got heaps of details around that too. Next up is a little bit of a medieval path. Not too crazy of a build. We've just got a nice textured path that runs alongside this spruce forest here. And then right in the middle, we have this little detailed area with a campsite, a cart, and a couple of random decorations. Next up is a medieval road that I built for a thumbnail. So we have, uh, yeah, basically don't, also don't worry about how we have this giant shadow here, just don't worry about that. So yeah, actually this is another build that I never even used for the actual thumbnail it was meant for, but basically we have two giant forests on the sides and then just this massive wide textured medieval path in the middle. Next up we have another four conditions kind of build, this time a medieval tower. So first obviously here is the pristine version. We've got a kind of weird looking plant thing on the front and then just a very detailed little tower with a flag as well. For the next stage here, the uh, leaves are getting a little bit out of hand. The flag's a little bit tattered and we've introduced some texture and also some like stairs in here as well meant to look like maybe just kind of bricks missing from the tower. For the third stage here, we are entering, uh, you know, kind of uh, destroyed territory. We have a big chunk taken out of it. The leaves are basically taking over the build at this point and uh, it's a shell of its former self. And for the completely ruined design here, we have basically almost nothing left, just a couple of walls. And once again, you know, I love adding my little campsites in here and this one just works so well, man. For these next four builds, I challenge myself in making four completely different medieval wall designs with this first one here being a like stone and wood one, just a simple kind of layout. Next up, we have a bit more of a predominantly stone variant of a medieval wall. This time we have a lot of stone pillars and then we have these little wooden uh, kind of things in the middle. This next one has a little bit of a tower in the middle with just a little bit of details this time. The previous ones had a quite a bit of details and these ones I just decided to go a little bit more lighter on. And for the final one, this one's meant to be more of like a gate or a little pass-through design kind of wall where we have a, a bit of a doorway in the middle, which is pretty cool. This next build is a collaboration between myself, Extra Builds, and Bit Gardener, And basically it's just a giant Mediterranean island. So as you can see, here's my lighthouse from before. I uh, kind of reused that in the previous build. I actually built it here first. We've got a great big dock around the front, not too detailed. We went kind of light on the details. And there's just a bunch of like of these cool little houses around. I don't think I built any of these because uh, yeah, I was kind of intimidated and I hadn't really built anything like this before. Actually, I think maybe this one I had built. I don't know. Or I built this little garden here. I can't remember. But I built the entire lighthouse and I'm pretty sure I helped with like the layout through here. We've got a nice look layout. I don't know. It's just cool. But yeah, once again, we do not talk about the back of the build. Next up, we have a little meeting room. Uh, I did not build this. I'm pretty sure it was Owen the ordinary that built this because we were trying to think of builds. Uh, honestly, we had just been completely running out of ideas. So we made this little meeting room for us to uh, meet up in and think of ideas. Then I don't think we ever actually used it. <laughs> Next up, we have a little bit of a melon house. I actually made this for, I think it was my first ever sponsorship. Uh, honestly, I can't remember what company it was for. It was something melon related. And uh, basically they just wanted me to make a build relating to their company. And so I made a melon house, which I think turned out pretty cute. Inside, uh, I actually did make an interior, nothing too crazy. But yeah, if you like fruit bases, melon kind of things, then um, maybe this is the base for you, mate. Next up, we have an absolute crap load of mine entrance designs to get through, with this first one here being the Dark Oak one. So basically, I just made this massive, thick goddamn tree, and uh, yeah, it just has a little mine that leads down into it. Next is the desert mine entrance. Uh, yet again, another simple one. We've got two little towers on the side. We've got a little entrance in the middle, this nice detail of a mine cart on the outside, and then of course, you know, it just leads down into a mine. This next mine entrance was made by Extra Builds and Owen the Ordinary. I take no credit for this and I'm kind of glad that I don't take credit because it looks um, not very great. I don't know about this coal texturing around here. It's uh, a bit too much. We've got a cute little house over here though and a little bit of a mine entrance here too. Next up we have four uh, themed mine entrance designs with this first one here being like a bit of a medieval themed one. We just got the simple classic entrance here. We've got a nice little minecart track that leads outside and goes into the mine as well and just a bunch of random details. The second one here is a uh, Japanese themed one. It's actually based on a reference image and uh, that's basically how I came up with the idea to add this little pass through here that would uh, somehow lead up to this top section and uh, yeah we just have a little minecart track that leads in and out as well. The third one here is a dwarven mine entrance which I'm pretty sure I took inspiration from Skyrim for and we have these two little towers with uh, some lava passing through a little bit of a gold block accent in those and then a nice big iron doorway as well. And for the fourth one we have just a completely overgrown kind of natural themed one. These vines need a little bit of trimming in here. I haven't 
haven't been here in a while, but uh, yeah, here's the entrance. Uh, just a simple little detailed, uh, kind of overgrown, ruined themed one. Next up, we have another four mine entrance designs. These ones are very different because this was a collaboration with Animal Mace. With this first one here being, uh, I honestly don't know. I think this is meant to be like a big tree kind of, I have no idea. It's very different from my usual theme, thanks to Animal Mace. Which, yeah, honestly, I really love how this turned out and the rest of them, they are all pretty cool. This next one here is another dwarven themed mine entrance. Uh, and this one is just, yeah, completely different from the previous one. We have these nice massive towers and a big open doorway here that leads into a nice like kind of dripstone cave. We've got some copper accents. We've got these little flags on the front. Dude, it's just such a nice little entrance, dude. So detailed. For the third one, we have, uh, honestly, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of similar to the first one. We have this like big entrance here, a big custom tree with a weird swinging thing with uh, some amethyst on it. A big cart with a donkey pulling it as well. And the final one that was a collaboration with Animal Mace, we have a desert one with a massive axolotl. I'm pretty sure the axolotls had just came out as we built this, which is why we added this in. We also added like a little oasis river thing out the front with a little bit of a bridge going over that as well. And here's another four mine entrance designs. I am so sorry about how many of these there are. You can tell I loved making them and all of these four were made by myself, I'm pretty sure. This first one here just being like a kind of, uh, I don't know, just a rocky one. This next one is an overgrown one. Bunch of leaves, bunch of random like, you know, overgrown kind of details. The third one is a Japanese themed one. We've got a big Tory gate out the front that serves as kind of the entrance down into that. Uh, that's the kind of only thing that makes it Japanese themed. And for the fourth one, we have a desert themed one with two big towers. We've got a multicolored flag up here, which looks pretty cool. And that of course, you know, obviously leads into a mine. This build thankfully isn't a mine entrance, but uh, instead it is actually a mine interior built with extra builds. Uh, dude, I don't know what it is about this and I don't know where I got the inspiration from it, but it just turned out so nice. We've got these big minecart tracks that are on varying heights. We've got like an L shaped one. We've got a big one here and then another one that goes through here. We've got like a bit of a waterfall and just heaps of random details. Next, I'm sorry, but we have more mine entrances. This time these ones are biome specific with this one here being a jungle themed one. I kind of made it like overgrown and as if it's been kind of like abandoned, we got like this little fenced off section here. This build right here is a, uh, a bit of a mine. Uh, I don't know what it is. Actually, I called it mine railway. You might be able to see it right there. I just pointed at my monitor. You guys can't see that. I'm kind of an idiot, but uh, yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's just a railway. Like we got this railway that goes in here. We got one that goes over there and then we have this elevated one too. I don't know. Pretty cool. And next up, we have another mine entrance. Uh, very similar to one that I've showcased before, but honestly, I think I like this one more. Uh, it's just, I don't know. It's just so perfectly like, you know, staggered. I don't know what else to call that. Lovely little bit of a railway there that goes right down the middle and just a couple of cute details as well. I love these like little pillar designs where we have like back to back trap doors kind of supporting the roof. Pretty cool. Next, we have some mine shaft designs. So instead of the exterior, we actually have the interior here with this first one being just a standard medieval layout. We got a couple of rails here that lead down to an elevator. Theoretically, you know, you open that up, you jump in, you go down to the bottom. This next one here is like an overgrown themed one where we have uh, basically just a little bit of a ruined uh, minecart track that leads to this big pond and a bunch of nice little overgrown details. This third one here is like a kind of overgrown uh, ruined version, I guess. I don't know. We have like these big pillars here where we've got chunks taken out of them. We've got the broken up railway. We've got little like water slits in the floor and yeah, just a bunch of nice little details. And for this next one, we have something completely different. We have like a modern kind of industrial themed one. We got like this nice railway here that kind of splits off into two different ones. We've got like a little power box thing here. I don't know what that's meant to be. We got like a sewer system with the bridge going over it and a big iron door, a bunch of pipes as well. Pretty cool. Next is another level one to four with this being level one here and now uh, basically, you know, it's just a mine shaft. Um, yeah, this one's kind of crap. Moving on to level two, we've uh, upgraded the width a little. We've added some little details, some chests and some furnaces and stuff too. Level three, even wider still. We've got some nice pillar details as well and just a couple of random blocks scattered throughout. And level four, the final level here, we've got even more detailed pillars. We've got detail throughout the ground. We've got a big railway through here that leads down to the end of the mine with a couple of diamonds as well. This next one is actually my idea to update mine shafts. And with this first part here being uh, to basically add like mine shaft entrances on the surface. I just thought that'd be a cool idea instead of having to, you know, find one in a mine or something. Maybe you could like just rarely come across like a little entrance here that'll lead down into a mine shaft. And to go along with that previous build, here's my idea to update the interior of the actual mine shaft. So we got a completely different design here with the pillars and the little support thing across here. We've got broken up tracks instead of just like, you know, in the middle, it goes across all sides. And my other idea as well was to add these like little like station areas where you can craft and smelt and store stuff. Next up, we have 
a mini keep build. So yeah, this is kind of the build that's meant to be inside of a castle. So the castle's like the walls and then the keep is on the inside. Except for this, I just decided to make it just the keep and we've got these nice little crump fields on the outsides and then on the inside, we just have like a nice little compact layout. I do have a tutorial for this on my channel. If you wanna watch it or build it for yourself, be sure to check it out. These next four builds are a little bit of a series of some mini medieval builds with this first one here just being a tiny little arched medieval bridge. This thing is so cute, dude. Next we have a little mini cart with a roofed area as well for it and yeah so we just have like an oak trap door some signs and a little bit of a platform to make a cart and just heaps of random little details on top of that too next is the mini medieval house a perfect detail to add into your medieval villages just scatter them around to make it look a little more lively the next detail is a little bit of a mini tower here so yeah nothing too crazy it's completely made of stone some little wooden accents we got a door as well with a ladder that leads up to the top with just some random details and the final mini medieval evil decoration is this little storage pile just like a scattered kind of random like pile of crap. I don't know. It just looks cool. Next up, we have a mining outpost build. So this is kind of laid out in a castle theme where we have a couple of towers. We have a big one at the back as well. And then right at the entrance here, you can walk on through into where the actual mine is. We have minecart tracks here that lead into this little station. We've got details in here, a little pathway throughout that leads to the different towers and then over to the back tower as well. This next build is actually in a series of builds where I tried to basically recreate the surface of some moons. And this one being Miranda. This one's basically... I just uh, found a desert, replaced all of the blocks with these blocks to make it look like the surface of uh, the moon Miranda. This build's a bit of an old one, but it's definitely still nice and holds up today. So this one is uh, basically just a decorated mob spawner. So in here we have the actual spawner. We've got this like hooked up freaking redstone thing to turn on and off the spawner. Uh, it's a little bit broken. Just don't worry about that. We've also got a little maintenance tunnel here that leads out if you get any clogs. This area here is where the mobs will get sent up down into this spot where you can slay them. We've got hoppers down here that lead down into our chests where you can collect all of their items. This one here is a little bit of a mini modern house design. Also in a uh, basically completely wooden style as well. And uh, the whole idea behind this one is I came up with this like window wall design late at night one night. I sketched it down on my phone in my like notes app and uh, yeah, I just thought it would look kind of cool. It's kind of weird. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that basically inspired this whole build here. Just this little mini house. I'm pretty sure I have a tutorial or something like that on this channel. Um, yeah. Next, we do have a couple of mountain bay with this first one here being entirely created by extra builds. I actually really love this, like how it's got like these three rings. And that of course leads into our interesting interior in here. We've got a little bit of aquarium. We've got like some shelves with some stuff. I love these like ladders that kind of lead you up to the different floors. This ladder here is the one that leads in and out of the base, obviously. Next, we have a little bit of a mushroom base, something very different from my usual kind of builds. So we found this like whole mushroom island thing here. And uh, yeah, we just decided to basically create a giant mushroom base heading on inside a little bit of a cute interior in here. And this build right here is a basically way more advanced version of our little mushroom house over there. This one was made by Ritz Builds, an absolutely fantastic builder, as you can probably tell by the state of this house and how amazing it looks. I love these, like, it almost looks like a little mustache kind of roof. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It looks so cool. This chimney, though, holy mother of God, that thing. That could be toned down a little bit, I think. Continuing on over here, we have a natural path. A uh, bit of a level 1 to level 4 type of deal. Once again, here's level 1. Level 2, we introduced some shape. It's a little bit of texture, some dirt, and also a little bit of a river beside it. Level 3, of course, adds even more, you know, details. We've got some little stones. We've got some sugar canes. We've got rocks in the water. And the final level, level 4. Here we go. We've got the ultimate natural natural path here. We've got a nice little overhang area with a bunch of details scattered throughout this bad boy. Up next is a little bit of a backyard design. I don't know why, I just had that, you know, just the idea to make a little bit of a backyard kind of garden farm thing. So yeah, we have basically just a little bit of a fence here. And then lining that, we just have heaps of these little planter boxes with various flowers and uh, plants in those. This next build is a little bit of a detailed cliff design. I've made quite a few of these, as you can probably tell in this video. I've showcased quite a bunch, but uh, yeah, this one's just a nice little simple one. Now it is time for the nether portals. We've reached that section in my warps list. And this first one here is like in a cave and a bit of an overgrown theme. I also love having like a massive 
portal back here and then covering it up with stone blocks to make it look like it's kind of oddly shaped. Definitely a really nice way to elevate any kind of nether portal that you want to build. Next up, we have some smaller nether portal designs. This first one here being just a simple kind of medieval themed one. I don't really know what this is meant to be, but uh, yeah, just something kind of small. Next up, it's another small one. This time it's embedded in the side of a cliff and we have this like kind of little outcrop area where we've added the portal into. This one here is a bit of a obviously desert themed one. We have some honestly kind of weird looking towers and they're not very far spaced apart. Probably could have made this portal maybe three or four blocks wide instead of just two, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's okay. And for the next one, we have a little bit of a ruined themed one where it's kind of embedded in this like stone that's been uh, destroyed and is uh, basically just leaving a little bit of uh, some rocks and the portal. We've got even more designs here. This next one here being a futuristic style of portal meant to look kind of like a Stargate portal or something like that. Nice and circular. To do that, we of course obviously have our square shaped three by three portal in there. And then I've just added like a bunch of stone and stuff around it to make it look like it's circular. This next one here is embedded in a little bit of a weird tree. I kind of made it look like it was a massive tree that's since been chopped down and then it started to reshoot here. And I don't know, I just thought it was a nice little detail kind of thing for a portal. Next up is one in a bit of a uh, shrine style. Like people have been worshiping it or something like that. They've added like candles around it and a little bit of a platform too. And for this next one, we have another medieval theme. This one uh, basically just entirely wood and we have these nice little towers on the sides with obviously the portal in the center. Next up, we have a bit of a bigger portal. Uh, once again, kind of utilizing that design where we have a massive square shaped portal and then we've covered it with stone to make it look like it's oddly shaped. We've also added heaps of various, uh, you know, greenery kind of blocks around this, a little bit of a lined pathway as well to it as, uh, you know, extra detail. This build here is based on a nightmare I had at the time and I just decided to recreate it in Minecraft for some reason. Uh, yeah, it definitely gives me kind of weird vibes and is a bit creepy and basically the nightmare I had is uh, I was down in like these weird underground hangars and then I look to the left here and some weird flying creature basically comes out, takes me, grabs me and shoots me up this hole and then out into the sky and we're like flying out in the sky. It just felt so real. I don't know why I just I felt the need to recreate it in Minecraft to share it with you guys. Next we have a very old build. This one here is in a kind of oasis style where we've got like a big river running throughout the desert here and it leads off into this big oasis. We also added a little bit of an island in the middle with a bridge connecting up to it, a couple of weird like gazebo design things and a little house and just a bunch of custom palm tree designs throughout as well. Here's a base design that I never ended up completing. Uh, it was actually going to be for a tutorial that I never just, uh, you know, got around to. I thought it was going to be pretty cool. The thumbnail was going to look really nice just having water surrounding the whole thing. But yeah, I just could not settle on a design for the actual base on top. As you can see, it's unfinished and still just looks kind of weird. Here is an ocean cave based on an image from Sea of Thieves. It's kind of like these like weird little underwater caves that they added and have like these big ribs sticking out the front. I just got really inspired from seeing that picture and decided to recreate it in Minecraft. And it leads into this nice little cave down here that just goes, um, yeah, I don't know, to nothing. This is another one based on a reference picture from Reddit that I found. It's basically meant to be like a kind of petrol station roof thing. You know how they kind of look like this? And it's just in this like surrounding flooded landscape or like ocean or something. And it's just got greenery growing on top of it. And I basically just recreated it in Minecraft. And yeah, I think it turned out pretty nice. This next build is basically just a giant hole in the ocean. I think I used this for a thumbnail in one of my hardcore videos. Uh, I think it was the underwater village that I made. And yeah, just coming back to this, it, it's definitely just like, I don't know. It's not really a build, but it's just kind of creepy to stumble across in the middle of the ocean, just a giant hole. Might be a cool idea. Maybe add like a big base at the bottom or something. This next build here is uh, an ocean trader. Once again, another build that I uh, copied from Sea of Thieves, basically. I just used that as reference and it is the North Star Seapost. If you want to Google that and look at what it looks like in game. And uh, yeah, we basically just recreated that. We made the little stone outcrop that it's on, the little trading stall, big chimney, a bridge, and uh, you know, it leads to a boat as well and all of the other boats that I actually showcased previously. And I actually forgot to showcase this one here, but we have like a little bit of a raft base design. Definitely a really nice idea. Something you could easily expand on and just make into a massive like platform base, kind of like the game raft. And yeah, I don't know. That's just a, a pretty cool base design, honestly. Next up, we have another little boat design that I forgot to showcase. This one's more of like in a canoe kind of shape. And um, yeah, it's got like a big weird sail in the middle and uh, just very detailed. And here's another little boat, uh, kind of an upgraded version of this little mini one over here. It's uh, basically just elongated. We also added some sails onto it as well. And this build here is basically the upgraded version of the ocean trading post that we made back over there. I just had the idea to expand it into basically a trading village 
village here into a massive like giant stone uh, rock in the middle of the ocean. We've got a big dock around the front for heaps of people to arrive at and then just various trading stalls in these little houses throughout. This next build was not created by me but uh, I believe it was made by Owen the Ordinary and it's uh, just like a little office kind of workspace design. I really like this shelf idea where it's like basically just upside down stairs and then a little detail on each shelf. It's pretty cool. It's nice little like painting design and obviously the workstation. A very nice little computer design as well. I quite like this build. Next up is another level 1 to level 4 type deal. I don't even need to say it. Obviously level 1 right here. I did forget to mention this build is actually for an overgrown bridge with this one here being level 2. And here's level 3 upgraded once again. We just got different kinds of blocks and we've expanded the roof a little bit. And the final form level 4 here we've got an even nicer roof here with some leaves kind of bursting out the seams. Kind of overgrowing the little container that it's got around it and just even more detailed kind of walls on the bridge here. Okay I have to say it. This next build here I'm pretty sure is my all time favorite build I've ever made. You guys really loved it as well over on my Instagram when I posted it. I've used it for a thumbnail in one of my videos from ages ago and I might even make something similar to this in my hardcore series too. I actually use reference for this picture. It's a, in a real existing overgrown railway. I think it's in like France or somewhere like that. I found it on Reddit and yeah dude it's just such a nice build. I'm gonna take a little extra time to just go through this one because it's probably my favorite build. So we've got these great big pillars here on the sides and then we have like some nice just kind of textured stone bricks on the inside. Bunch of overgrown details of course that is just what makes this build kind of bring it to the next level. We've also added some nice grass and various bushes down below. We've got nice textured floor here with some cracks. We of course have our minecart tracks that lead throughout and lead to this actual tunnel like underground segment and then over here we have a little bit of a water fountain waterfall thing as well. Next up we have two palisade wall designs with this first one here being a uh, I don't know like a wood kind of uh, alternating between spruce and stripped spruce. Sorry I burped a little then I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> Oh shit. We've also made it look a little more fortified by adding some signs across here and then also some trapdoors and uh, alternating stairs and slabs here too. And for the second palisade wall, we just got a slightly different design. This time we have textured planks and stripped spruce. We've added some little andesite walls and some of these spikes up here and then just, uh, you know, kind of a similar design for the fortifications. Next up, we have a couple of path designs using various different blocks for the actual paths with this first one here being just our standard dirt path and coarse dirt as well. Next, we have the stone themed one using various stone blocks. We've got a stone bench as well. This one here is the granite slash brick version. We've got, you know, a brick and a granite bench. We've got, uh, yeah, just various details around as well. And my voice is starting to disappear at this point, but here is like the light kind of uh, royal themed one uh, with a uh, royal bench as well. Next up, we have another level one to four build, this time some pathways. Here's level one. I do apologize, this area looks very weird. Here's level two, adding a little bit of shape to the path. Level 3 adds a little bit of texture with some coarse dirt and some weird black bushes because of this giant platform above us. Oh my god, what is going on there? And level 4, we definitely could have added some trees to this probably, but uh, we got bushes, we got little like kind of scattered fences, we got a stone and some bushes with, um, I think I already said bushes, but uh, they have little log piles around them as well. Next we're taking a look at a couple of Pirate Cove designs, with this first one here being a collab between myself and Extra Builds. But yeah, we got a little hanging guy over here, we have, uh, you know, Obviously our main pirate base here. We've got our dock to arrive at. Plenty of, uh, you know, the old Jolly Rogers around to warn people from raiding this guy's little base here. Yeah, just kind of a cute design. If you like pirates and maybe don't want to live on a boat, maybe something like this could be pretty cool. And here's Pirate Cove number two. This one's definitely a lot bigger. We have kind of a big, massive, like, chunk taken out of this stony outcrop area. The ocean nicely seeps into this area and we've added heaps of slabs and stairs to make that transition really nice and smooth. Back in here, we just got various details, a little bridge over this massive like hole and a bit of a waterfall too and uh, theoretically this little path here would leave would lead off to the actual base and here is pirate cove number three kind of a combination of the previous two actually so we've got a bit of a boat hanging around the outside here in here we've got a little bit of a smaller boat and then the actual base itself we've got a nice u shape that kind of follows the interior like shape of this rock here and then just scattered throughout we have random base elements you know we've got our brewing everything over here we've got our bed in here we have smelting crops and chances 
enchanting, and then we have a nice little pathway up here that leads to our main storage area. Next, we have a little bit of an island design as if it's kind of been taken over by pirates. So they've stumbled across here, found some treasure, set up camp, and uh, yeah, just kind of took over the island, and uh, that's basically it. Next up, we have a big old pirate ship design. I love these like tattered sails here, kind of like as if it's like a ghost ship or something. We've got this nice cannon design as well. My signature capstan design from before. Yeah, overall, just a pretty nice little boat design. And this next boat here is very similar to the previous one, except I actually outfitted this one to be a base design. So I'm pretty sure I made it a little bit taller to accommodate, you know, the base inside. I'm not going to do a full tour of this because I do actually have a tutorial video and showcase video on my channel. So if you want to see all of it, be sure to check that out. Next up, we have a pirate trader build. This was a collab by myself and Extra that um, I, yeah, it looks like we never finished it, but this was actually going to be a pretty big build. So we've got the same boat design from before. Don't worry about that. Um, uh, we also have the same, basically the same uh, little trader design from before too. Actually, it is different. It is a different setup. We've got a nice little torch over here as well and a little bit of a storage area for the trading store. Over here, uh, we just didn't really add anything. I thought there was a house here, but I guess not. We have this massive thing. I don't know what this is meant to be. Over here, we've got a little like trading store thing. That's just not even in the same style as uh, a pirate kind of theme. Over here, we have a little bit of a big campsite thing. We've got a boat and a little jungle house thing too. I don't know, this whole island is just kind of out of whack. Next, we have a pirate trader situated in a little bit of a uh, ocean cove. If you can't tell, I loved building these kind of little things. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, we basically just have a uh, little cove here. I'm really good at explaining stuff if you couldn't tell. We've obviously got a trading stall here with just various items kind of strewn about. This next build here is one that I actually made for a thumbnail for one of my uh, village build ideas. And uh, it's basically just a little mini village enclosed in a big old walls. On the inside, we've got a couple of houses, a little bit of a trading area, and then just heaps of crops lining this as well. This next build is my house design from one of my old hardcore series. And so I made it in this kind of l shape design with like the back being, uh, you know, a little bit taller than the front one here. I just thought that'd be a cool idea. And it's of course just completely surrounded by crops as well. This next build here is a massive one. It is a Plains Village upgrade. So basically, uh, yeah, there was a little bit of a Plains Village here and we just expanded the absolute crap out of it. I'm not really going to go through everything just because it's going to take too long, but we've got a massive little custom tree design here. I don't know why I said massive little, but yeah, that just leads up to all of these houses. I add a little extra segment here after the fact, and then even more over here. These are all just for thumbnails and stuff. And I also added a little river going throughout here too. Next, we have another four portal designs with this one here being another take on the futuristic themed one. This time it's a little bit more slim and slender, and that's thanks to these walls here. It actually does expose a little bit of the obsidian, but it's not too bad. This next one here is pretty simple. It's on its own little custom island that I built, but basically it's meant to just look like a portal with, uh, you know, some palm trees kind of around it and engulfing it a little bit. This one here is the overgrown one. Once again, we're using the same design where we have a big portal and then it's got stone in front of it. But another thing we did actually is add these little segments where you can kind of see the portal through the stone. And I don't know what it is about it, dude. I just love that effect. It looks so good, man. And what should be the final portal, I'm pretty sure of this whole video is this one here, a ruined one. Uh, and yeah, we basically just have these four pillars that have kind of been ruined. I don't know what the original structure was meant to be. Next up, we have a little bit of a toxic lake design, which is actually probably one of my most unique builds I've made. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's using a little bit of a popular technique where we have like some green glass that slowly fades into different colors. Um, actually we have it kind of showcased here. Yeah. So we go from yellow to green to lime to yellow, you know, and we cycle through that and then we have glowstone at the bottom and it kind of gives this like radioactive lake look. And we have that all pouring out of this like uh, sewer grate tunnel thing in here and then out into the lake. And then we of course, you know, decorated it with some dead grass kind of vibes and uh, dead trees as well. Moving on, we have a completely transformed ravine build. So we just found this existing ravine. And then of course we just added a whole bunch of decorations around the outside, heaps of greenery. And on the inside, we filled it up to the brim with water and we just decorated all of the walls by adding in stairs, slabs, texture, and just a whole bunch of greenery kind of stuff. Next up, we have a little bit of a ravine base. So we just, yeah, simply have a base at the end of a ravine here. I don't even know if this classifies as a ravine, but, um, uh, you know, the, the idea is there. And for this next build, we kind of have uh, both of the previous builds combined into one. We have an upgraded ravine and we decided to just add a base at the bottom as well. So we've added heaps of greenery, of course, and then down in the base, we have a nice little river that kind of flows throughout the entire base. We have little bridges over them as well. Over here, we got a crop farm. In here, we have like some stuff for the base. Over here, we've got enchanting. And then over here is our mine entrance as well. Another ravine build is the ravine mine here.
here. This one was built using reference from a uh, image that I found on Reddit. And yeah, basically we just have like a bridge over here that leads to this mine entrance. And then we just have like kind of a decorated exterior around here. We've got a staircase that goes down below the bridge. And then over here we have a ladder that heads back up to the main area over here. Next, we have another nature build. This time it's a cave that kind of goes through a river. And I actually have no memory of building this at all. So I don't know if I built this. But uh, we just have this weird kind of um, custom tree above here with the roots hanging down. We got some hanging roots on those as well. On to the next build, we have the river farm. This was created with extra builds. And yeah, I love this build, dude. We got just massive freaking crop fields. All wheat on this side. We got a little bridge that heads over to this side where we alternate between wheat and carrots and then just a little farmhouse as well. This build is another collab with extra. He actually built most of this. I think I just helped with the river a little bit. But yeah, it's just a cool little idea. We got a river that splits off into like a Y or into two different parts. And then we just have a little island with a house on it in the middle. Next, we have four river build idea design things. I don't really know what this one's meant to be. Just kind of like a, just a decorated river. We got a little ruined tower. We got heaps of stones and random decorations in the actual river. This next one is a actual like kind of man-made river. So like a canal or something like that. We got a bridge going over that. We have a little grate where the water can actually pass through. And then we just have a nice kind of like overgrown vibe as well in this canal. The next one here is a Japanese slash jungle theme one, almost like a Zen garden kind of like vibe. We've got a little bridge that crosses over it. It leads over to this little gazebo well thing. And we also have a, just a simple kind of river, but we've also added the thing I showcased before where we just have some campfires under here to make it look like the river is like steaming or, you know, something like that. And for the final river design here, we have just like a simple medieval wooden vibe one. Uh, uh, yeah, we just got like a nice arched bridge here. We've got a little campsite on this side and just a, you know, moderately decorated river. Next, we have two versions of a riverside base with this one being the pristine version. And please forgive me as the surroundings are a little bit whack, but just imagine this is a big old river. We've got a nice little farm that's slowly being reclaimed by nature. We've got a dock. We've got a house that's also being reclaimed by nature. I don't actually know if this is the pristine version. Uh, I don't know, but the other version's over there. Let's go to it now. Yes, yeah, so here is the ruined version of the build. As you can see, the house is in complete shambles. I've also done my signature little, you know, campsite added into the ruined house. And it's just, you know, overall a little bit more in shambles. The dock isn't really usable. We've got a completely overgrown crop field here. And yeah, just a nice little like kind of uh, comparison between a ruined build and a kind of, uh, you know, pristine but overgrown build. Next, we have another bridge design. You guys know I love my bridges. We probably have quite a few more to get through, I'd imagine. But this one is a roofed bridge. We've got two little towers on the sides with a nice roof in between them and just one big old arch here to allow big boats through. This next build is just a simple little ruined tower. I've made quite a lot of these, so um, we're just going to quickly go through it. Of course, you know, the campsite added in. Next, we have a bunch of builds from my river update idea that I made quite a while ago. I think it's around two years ago at this point. But this one is an idea to update uh, rivers into adding like little lush creeks and like different variants and stuff. Go watch the video if you want some actual context in this. But this is just like, you know, my idea to add like a lush creek into Minecraft. This next one is uh, what could, you know, be dried creeks or rivers in Minecraft if they actually added that in. It'd be pretty cool, you know, just kind of stumbling across something like this. What was once a river is now just uh, bone dry. So that first one was a lush creek. This is what lush rivers could look like. A little bit wider and just more room for details. We've got heaps of seagrass. We've got heaps of leaves and trees everywhere. And yeah, just a nice like kind of lush variant of a river. This one is the complete opposite. We have one in a spruce biome and it's actually a stream. So it's just a single block wide bit of like a little water channel that just runs through the land here and just ends all the way down at the ocean over here. And the final things for my proposed river update idea would be to add some massive waterfalls into the game. I know they already exist, but they don't really look as nice as this usually. And yeah, so we have, uh, well, theoretically, a river that would continue up here. Just don't worry about that. But uh, yeah, it would just lead down over here and just kind of split off into like a river over yonder. So that previous build was the large variant of the waterfalls. And this one here is the small variant. Just a nice like kind of rocky version as well. It transitions through different biomes. Over here, it's like kind of just bland because it's in like a spruce kind of snowy biome and then down here it transitions into the oak one so we added a couple of leaves and stuff too. Okay this next one is actually a secret base design. The first one I ever made. So we all we have to do to open it up is throw an item on top of this rock which will open up the doors. We can press this button to close it behind us and then heading through the base we have this main hallway design here which has all of our different rooms inside of it and all the way down at the end we have our indoor crop farm. Okay we're now in the secret base section I didn't really realize but if you have a look here you know we got a lot of secret underground bases to get through. So this next one here, I believe we throw something on top of this marked piece of grass. Inside we have a base that's kind of designed around this central hallway and we just have a bunch of nice features. We've got a freaking uh, super smelter in here. Crafting, you know, 
we've got a secret little entrance down there. We've got another secret entrance over here as well. So if you want to see what's in there, oh, I kind of revealed that one, but uh, if you want to see what's in them, be sure to check the video out. Secret underground base number two is already open for us. And this is actually one of the more recent ones I've built. We have these nice like fluorescent light designs above these big crop farms right at the entrance. That leads over to some storage. We've also got storage back here. Um, this one's kind of messed up because I had to fix it for a thumbnail. Storage, crafting, you know, the whole nine yards. We've got the mine entrance over here as well. This next one here is, uh, you know, another secret underground base. This one's a little bit messed up for a thumbnail I had to take. Oh my God, I had to take a lot of land out there to get the thumbnail I wanted. But yeah, this one's just laid out in a different way. We've got big crop farms at the front and then we have all of our modules at the back here. We've got an aquarium in this one as well and a little mine entrance too. Pretty nice base. Next, we have a little simple semi-automatic wheat farm. So the idea behind this is that you plant all of the crops. Once they've grown, you just simply press this button here, which will harvest all of the crops. And then you can just press it again to turn the water off and then replant all of your crops. All of the items will get sent into this chest here as well, which is pretty nice. Once again, I'm pretty sure I have a tutorial for this on my channel, so be sure to check that out if you want to build it. Next is another four short wall designs with this first one here just being a simple stone kind of medieval one. The second one here is a simple wooden version. Short wall number three is like a deep slate kind of nether themed one where we got some soul lanterns as well. And the fourth one is like a little bit of a like cliff, like a mini cliff design. Obviously, you'd repeat this as far as you want to go. And yeah, it could be like a nice little uh, thing to keep mobs out from your base if you got it on top or something. I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> Next, we have once again, another bridge design. This one is uh, basically just entirely made out of wood, except for these stone trims here. Heading on through, we've got a nice like campfire, extinguished campfire bridge that leads over to a little dock in the middle as well, where you can uh, park up a boat. Next, we have four simple gate designs with this first one here being, of course, a medieval theme. We've got two towers on the left, a nice little entrance in the middle. Simple gate number two is in kind of like a village theme where we just have oak wood. We have like these cool little like slats with some azaleas down below, some pot plants and a door to get through. Now this is gate number three. Honestly, I don't know where gate number four went. Um, I don't know if I even built a number four. I'm pretty sure I did. Oh, it's a modern one. Where is it? It's somewhere, but uh, it wasn't very nice anyway. But yeah, so the third one here is just a obviously ruined gate. We've got two ruined towers on the side, a little arch, and of course the freaking signature goddamn campsite in here too. Next we have another little cottage kind of house design. This one made out of dark oak wood instead of the usual goddamn spruce that I always use. On the inside we have a bit more of like a realistic layout with a kitchen at the bottom, a little table. Upstairs we have this nice area with um, a big chunk of the wall taken out. Don't worry about that. And then in here we just have our bedroom. I'm pretty sure I have a tutorial for this on my channel. It's called like Simple House or something like that. Check it out if you want. Next up is some simple wall designs with this first one here being of course the medieval theme. Next is the nether theme where we have of course the same kind of inlay with the blue. We've got some open fence gates this time. The third one is our desert themed one. We have a nice little inlay of stripped jungle wood this time with some signs at the tops and bottoms. And this next one here is the Japanese themed one where we have this nice kind of roof. Obviously this would continue off on this side as well and you'd have the wall on this side too. Next is another four wall designs. I loved my goddamn walls okay. Don't judge me. I'm gonna get through these really super quick. This one's obviously medieval themed. Next up is another palisade style one. The third one here is a nether themed one. We got some nice little nether like kind of plants in here. We got some growing uh, vines as well. Pretty nice. And the fourth one is a kind of second variant to the medieval one where we have like more pillars, more stone, and uh, just overall looks a little bit more fortified. Next, we have some small bridge designs with this first one here being the nature themed one. It's just a simple little arch. And we also have a custom tree as well. This next one here is a nether themed one. We've utilized this nice design having some chickens stuck under here to add like this nice little like, I don't know what you'd call it, like a hand railing. The third small bridge is a medieval one and of course we'd have just utilized a single arch with some stone. We've got the little uh, design here to let water pass through and uh, yeah. And the fourth one is a uh, wooden slash stone medieval one uh, and it's also roof. So we got a cute little roof here. I actually really like this one. It's a very nice small little detailed design. Pretty cool. Next we have some small farm designs with this first one being like a simple little roofed one with a uh, you know a crop farm down below. The second one here is a simple little circular design with a bit of a pond in the middle and then we have it surrounded with fences and some bushes too. This next one is a pretty cool little design, kind of like a Japanese themed one where we have a surrounding like bamboo wall that doesn't really act as a wall at all because anyone can kind of just walk through it. And then for the final one and the crappiest one in my opinion, just this weird little like raised garden bed style crop farm that only houses freaking like eight wheat men. What the hell? This one here is a little house design that I made quite a while ago. I also believe I made a tutorial for it on my channel, but honestly, it's kind of crap. Um, it's very small. Mainly just like a bit of a starter house. We've got a crop field out the front, heading on inside. 
we just have a simple like interior layout with everything you need. Next we have four smelting designs, kind of like just a segment of an interior. Too aesthetic, too efficient once again with this one here being the aesthetic or the first aesthetic version. And here's the second aesthetic version. Uh, yeah, obviously um, this one does not have a lot of smelting and is mainly just decorations at this point. And now these next two are the actual efficient versions with this one housing a lot more smelters of all variants. And the final one here is the most efficient one where we have the semi-automatic smelting layout with the hoppers that'll automatically deposit your ores into the smelter. Next we have a crane design that I made in my first ever survival series with extra builds, the Pro Builder SMP. Next we have a snowy keep or a snowy castle design. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about these towers. They look very weird. Not a lot of wood in this. That We definitely could have added a lot more wood. I like these like torch designs out the front actually. They're pretty cool. Next is an absolutely massive build that we went all out on, dude. A giant custom landscape. As you can see, this is what it looks like on the other side. A giant slope of snow here. This took hours to do, man. I should also mention this was a collab between myself, Extra Builds, and Owen the Ordinary. I take no credit for the actual build in the middle here. I was AFK while they were building this. I remember this. This was years ago, dude. And pretty much all I did was help design the little Christmas tree and just build this giant, like, snow slope. Next is a little space greenhouse design. Then we just have various designs in here. We've got little alternating crops and pot plants, and in the middle we have these big kind of, like, island things with a bunch of flowers and uh, other things. Next is the first Spanish villa build that I made with extra builds. It's a little bit under detailed, especially in this area here. And yeah, just like a simple little layout. Um, honestly, I am not a, uh, a big fan of this house design. Did we make an interior? Let's see. No, we didn't. <laughs> and this next Spanish villa design is actually a more recent one and a way better one in my opinion. We've got multiple colors in here. We've got bricks on the bottom floor and a whole like basically just island dedicated to this build here with a dock arriving to it. Nice little like area over here, custom little trees, a little greenhouse in here and an actual interior this time. Over here is like the kitchen and brewing stuff and then upstairs we have this little area and there you go you can see created by Extra and myself and in here we just have a little simple bedroom design. Next we have a spooky forest design. So how I made this was I just made a couple of custom spruce tree designs. You can actually see them up here. I made three in total and all I did was just copy one of them with weld edit and just pasted it around everywhere, rotated it and then I just did the same with the other ones to get this nice like varied forest design with uh, you know not too much effort gone into it. Next we have four staircase designs all in different themes and uh, kind of different shapes. Actually the shapes are pretty similar but the first one here of course being the medieval theme. I actually really love this build dude. We've got a nice super detailed little lamp post up here. Down in the middle we've got a garden and also a little sewer grate that runs down into you know the sewer through here. The second one is in a desert theme. We have like a bit of an oasis design in the middle with a like waterfall leading out from this like big main kind of uh, flame thing. The third one is a nether themed one. Please forgive the giant freaking thing blocking the sun up here. But yeah this time we have a little bit of a lava lake in the middle, a little garden using some of the nether plants and uh, yeah just um you know some nether blocks. And the fourth one here is the nature themed one. We have a little bit of a waterfall in the middle surrounded by some bushes, some fences and uh, some custom trees as well. Next we have some super secret starter based designs that I created with Gorillo a while ago. With this first one here being a not so secret pond design. Obviously you just make this in a normal looking pond. You wouldn't decorate it. And the secret entrance is over here in the corner. You just head down and then in here you have your little mini starter based design. Now I actually lied. I'm pretty sure only that one was a secret starter base. This one here is just like a regular kind of below ground starter base. We've got a little crop farm in the middle and we also have our like you know water for the crops is our water to get down into the base. And down here we just have our storage, bedroom, crafting and some furnaces. And the third starter base design over here is in a bit of a dock style. So we have a big old L-shaped dock at the front and that leads up to our little base here with uh, honestly not too much going for it. Uh, we got a little bit of storage and some barrels, our bed and a single furnace and crafting table. Next we have even more starter base designs all themed around the biome that they're situated in with this one obviously being the flower forest one. So we have this nice little base facade here with a bit of a roof around that. Some flower fields out the front. Heading inside we just have a simple little layout of course. It's only a starter base, nothing too crazy. Next is the forest starter base, another below ground one and a very super simple one. We just have our entrance and a trap door here. You head down, we've got our crafting, our storage, our smelting and our little bedroom back here. Next is the mountain starter base. So similar to the first one we have a base facade here except this time it is just a giant window. We've got the roof above, a little mini roof here for the door and inside we just have a super simple nice little layout. This next one here is the ocean starter base 
today. So we have a little bit of an entrance up here using a trap door. We have a big old window at the front as well. And inside we have this nice design. I actually really like this design. We've got like storage barrels around. We've got a little bit of crafting under here, a crafting table and some furnaces. We've got our storage here and a bed over here too. And what I believe is the final starter base here is the snowy biome one. So we just have this massive like stone structure in the middle of a snowy biome. And then in the front, we've carved out a little bit of a base here. We've got a window and of course our door that leads into the base. We've got a nice fireplace over this side, our storage crafting and our bedroom over here. Next is another level one to four build. This time it's a stone path. This is level one. We've got level two over here, introducing some shape. Level three adds some texture to that shape, a little bush and a lamppost. And the final level adds some little stone buttons around a river with a bridge going over it, a custom weeping willow tree. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Next, we have a stone pond design that I did not build. I believe this was entirely built by Extra Builds. It's got a cute little dock here that looks a little bit strange with just a bunch of like trap doors. Some campfires would be nice to add to that. And then we just have like a bunch of decorations around that too. Next, we have a big old stone quarry design. So down below here, we have a nice circular quarry here with a wooden staircase going down. And then up here, we have a staircase that leads up to our actual like crane design where we have some nice pillars supporting the actual crane here that uh, is connected to a little thingamajig. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Onto another stone quarry, this time completely different. We have it situated in this like kind of U-shaped little uh, environment. We have a big old crane here that leads down to our circular quarry once again, this time with a stone staircase heading down. And we've got just a bunch of greenery and we've got just a bunch of greenery around that, a little waterfall too. I love this design of having like the cracks in the ground with the water flowing through, just such a nice little touch, man. Next, we have four uh, weird storage designs uh, with this first one here just being like a weird kind of gate layout. And then we have our big storage in the middle. This was kind of meant to be like, I don't know, something you can add outside your base, but honestly, it's kind of weird. I never posted this and you can probably tell why. Build number two is like this weird house thing with storage on every single side. Build number three is similar to the previous one, except it's a bit bigger and um, honestly has less storage for some reason than that one. And the final one is like this natural themed one with just a bunch of chests in the side of a cliff. I kind of like this one. It's a nice little design. Next, we have my first storage house design that does have a tutorial on my channel if you want to build it. It's just this nice like kind of barn styled house design. And then heading inside, we just have a bunch of chests in here. Honestly, it's uh, yeah, it's not meant to be a completely efficient layout. It's meant to look nice and aesthetic in here. We've got a hanging chest, a bunch of chests on the walls and some barrels as well. And here's my second version of a storage house. This one's a little bit better in my opinion. It's not as aesthetic, but it is definitely a lot more efficient. In here, we have a heap of bloody chests. We've even got some crafting blocks in the ground as well. Next, we just have a bunch of various structures that I built for my structure update idea. That was actually the wrong side. Over here is the right side. And this one is obviously just a bit of a ruined bridge, kind of a nice like build that you could stumble across. And maybe repair it up if you wanted to have a functional bridge in your world. This next one is a little cabin structure that you could come across in like a forest or something like that. For the next theoretical structure in this structure update is a bit of a campsite where we have a little wool tent over here with just some various blocks. Kind of meant to be like another starter base thing. And I forgot to mention all of these structures would have a ruined variant as well that could spawn instead of the pristine one just to add a little bit of variation to it all. Next is a little field or like a crop farm structure that you could come across where we have some sheeps in the middle. We've got some uh, wheat on the left and then some carrots on the right. Next is probably the rarest structure you would find in the structures update. This is like a little bit of a medieval keep where we have a big crop farm on the outside. Then we have a staircase leading up to the interior that I, uh, looks like I did not make. <laughs> God, I'm a lazy prick. What the hell? Next, we have the ruined variant of the mine entrance structure. You could probably imagine what the pristine one would look like. Yeah, it'd just be so nice to come across something like this in, in like survival, just like an existing mine entrance. Maybe it doesn't go down too far, not to make it too like OP or something, but uh, yeah, just a nice design, nice idea, I guess. And the final idea for the structure update would be uh, yet again, another ruined tower. There is a pristine one around here somewhere. I don't know where it is, but this is the ruined one. Next, we have another couple of builds from another like phobia kind of uh, couple of builds that I did. This one being sub mechanophobia, the fear of uh, like large structures submerged in water with this first one here being like a massive flood shaft. This next one here is like the bottom of an oil rig that you would find like, you know, in the ocean. There's like some pretty creepy videos of some divers just like swimming through the water and then out of the abyss is just these massive structures, obviously a lot bigger than this. And they all actually lead up to an oil rig instead of nothing. And this one here is honestly not too creepy. It's just like a submerged subway entrance kind of thing. So yeah, obviously what was once a, uh, a subway is just completely submerged with water. Nothing too crazy. Next, we have one of my all 
all-time favorite underwater bases, the Subnautica base, obviously inspired by the game. <laughs> Holy shit. See, so yeah, on the right here, we have our entrance. Honestly, I don't know how you would get into this base. Uh, it is uh, mainly just theoretical. Up here, we have our, like, crop farm. We have, like, a tunnel that leads over to this segment of the base, and that leads over here as well. And one of my favorite details of this is this little design, like, kind of a vault door, and also these pipes that lead under the ocean and lead, uh, you know, theoretically somewhere, I guess. Next, we have another level 1 to 4 build. This time is a sugarcane farm, with this one being level 1. Very over the top, very crap. The second one here is upgraded into a little bit of a field design. The third one is actually completely automatic. We've got it in this nice little aesthetic kind of weird uh, layout. And the fourth one is, uh, yeah, this massive structure here, which is basically the same as this one, except that just has that design on both sides. We've added some bamboo in here as well. I don't know why that's in there. And then we have a very over the top layout of a minecart that goes between here and over to the other side and then deposits it all into this chest. And this does have a full tutorial on my channel. It's like, uh, automatic sugarcane farm or something like that. Next, we have a survival-based design that does have a tutorial on my channel if you want to build it for yourself or have a full tour of this. I'll just give a quick little showcase. You know, we got gardens, farms, and stuff. We've got more farms. Animal farm in here. We got furnaces down here. This little thing leads down to a nether portal, a toggleable nether portal actually as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, you press that one to turn it on and that one to turn it off. And then upstairs, we have just our, you know, house, our storage out here, and then our bedroom in there. Next, we have the survival compound. So, we have uh, basically this giant, like, walls on the outside with some towers. We've got our main gateway entrance thing here, and that, of course, leads into our base. In the middle, we got this little, like, bell thing. We've got gardens, farms. We've got everything on the outside here. Um, you know, just various stuff. we got enchanting, uh, storage. I'm pretty sure enchanting is one of these levels. Maybe not. I think that's actually in the basement. Um, you know, go check out the video if you want to go see everything in this base has to offer. This build here is a little bit of a simple survival base uh, on an island, basically. So we have a little dock build over here that leads over to our base. We've got a tent as well and a little bit of a mine entrance over here. I made like a nice like cinematic tutorial for this if you want to check it out. It's called like Survival Island or something. I don't know. Next, we have a super detailed suspension bridge in the Badlands biome. I'm pretty sure Extra Builds built most of this. Yeah, it's just a very nice like design. We've got like heaps of different kinds of blocks in this. This next build is a pretty big one and it was a collab between my Myself an extra build and this was basically our idea of a swamp village if they added it to Minecraft It's a little bit over the top. Some of the houses are a little crazy. Also, I don't know what's happening over there Don't worry about that. But yeah, we just built a whole bunch of little house designs This is the theoretical town center as well Another one of our ideas for it would be that uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of water in the swamps So it'd be cool if uh, you know the houses could spawn in the water on some platforms Next we have a bunch of builds relating to the fear Thalassophobia the fear of deep bodies of water in this first build here is just a giant like creature carcass. This next one I warn you might startle you. It's uh, a bit of a creepy fish face like a giant fish with heaps of teeth. Uh, so this was my first version. Over here is the second version and it's actually based on the game Iron Lung. I won't spoil anything about that if you haven't played it or watched it for yourself. This next one is uh, once again based on the game Iron Lung and it's uh, a, basically a recreation of the little submarine that you play the game from. This next one here is just like a creepy ledge in the ocean that just drops off into the abyss, basically. The next Thalassophobia build is uh, basically just a giant hole in the ocean. Once again, I edited this one in Photoshop to make it look a bit more creepy, and basically I just made it so that the bottom of the hole along here is like really super dark and uh, just looks super creepy and ominous. This next one here is a bit of a shipwreck at the bottom of the ocean. Um, yeah, nothing too crazy about this one. And this final one here for Thalassophobia is just another creepy ledge. It's based on a pretty popular image of some guy sitting on the edge of like this massive freaking hole. Next, we have a tiny medieval town. So we just have two houses. You might recognize both of these houses, actually. This is the medieval merchant house, and then this is another one uh, from somewhere. I think it's from, yeah, that house over there. Basically, I just copied and pasted these here. This is the bridge from before as well. So, yeah, I do apologize. This is basically existing builds you've already seen, but, um, yeah, they're combined to make a nice little layout of this mini medieval village. Next, we have another IRL farm. This one being the tobacco farm, and it's actually a little bit 
little bit messed up because uh, all of these saplings have grown. The next build is actually a nice little environment. It's meant to be just like this Tory gate situated in a nice little forest. We've got these big old custom tree designs around it and a nice pathway heading through as well. This next build was made entirely by Extra, I believe. He is the king of towers and roofs. And basically it's just a big old tower on its own little island here, a nice little staircase up to it. Next, we have a bunch of town center designs. So basically the idea behind these is you just add them to the center of your village and make it like a focal point, I guess. With this first one here being like a man-made pond thing with a bit of a crossroads. The next one here is a detailed little fountain design. We've got the water starting up here and it kind of rushes down over these like arms and uh, yeah, pretty cool. This next one is like a gazebo kind of a crossroads thing, just like a roofed little area. And this one here is like a big old custom tree design. Honestly, probably my most favorite custom tree I've ever made. It's just like, I don't know what it is about it. It's just like perfect. Next, we have another four town center designs with this one being similar to one of the previous ones, except we have converted it into a well. So we just excavated the ground here, added some water. This next one is like a little statue design. Not so much a town center, but mainly it's like a nice decoration. If your village has like a fallen hero or something, maybe a nice little like kind of thing to remember them by. This next one is basically the start of what could be a big old like medieval marketplace. In the final town center here is a little bit of a bell tower. And next we have two town entrance designs with this first one here being a wooden layout. We've got the same palisade wall design you've probably seen a couple of times in this video. This next one here is for a bit more of an established village or more like a kingdom. And I actually lied. I can't remember if I said uh, we have two town uh, village entrances, but uh, we actually have four with this one here being a nether themed one. And the final one here is a ruined one. Next we have some townhouse designs created by extra builds. I did not help with this build at all. So he takes full credit. But yeah, I think it is just the same house design repeated a couple of times with some different colors. And yeah, definitely a very unique and interesting house. Next we have a trading hall design that does have a tutorial on my channel. Be sure to check it out if you want to build it. In here is where all of the villages would be. We've also got another floor and then another floor up here as well. And I think if I'm not mistaken, we also have a bit of a torture chamber down here too. Uh, yeah, don't ask why I built this. Um, I'm pretty sure I was just bored. <laughs> Next, we have a couple of custom tree designs all made by extra builds and they're all just kind of a varying sizes. This first one over here is more of like, I don't even know, that's just weird. Um, <laughs> we've got a skinny one, a bit of a small kind of thick one and then a little bit of a larger one over here too. Next, we have the ultimate fishing dock. Honestly, I feel like this is not the ultimate fishing dock. There definitely could be a way bigger and way better one. We have like this like shop building at the back here that leads out to a bit of a boat dock and another one over here as well and just a bunch of nice decorations. This next build is the ultimate mansion base and this is actually built using a reference image. I think it was like a, uh, a museum building in Brazil, I believe. The Museo do Iparanga. I actually remember that. I don't know why. And yeah, so this build I remember took so long to make, man. It was crazy how long this build took to design and build. And it of course does have a tutorial video on my channel. So if you want to check it out, go watch it. Next, we have the ultimate survival base. So similar to the previous base of this design that I showcased, except this one is obviously way larger. I'm not going to do a full tour because this does have a tutorial and tour video on my channel. So check that out if you want to build it and check it out for yourself. Next, we have the ultimate super smelter. So basically just a giant freaking super smelter in here. Once again, we have two sides so you can smelt multiple different items. And then we just have a very kind of complex setup on either side. And uh, this one, of course, does also have a tutorial video on my channel. And next we have a bunch of ultimate survival based designs with this first one here being like a bit of a unique circular based design with heaps of crop fields. But this base does also have a tutorial video on my channel. So be sure to check it out. This next ultimate survival base is another circular one, except this time we actually have some massive walls around it with some towers as well. And each one of these little buildings on the sides is, actually has like a purpose. This next build is my all time most popular build I've ever made nearing basically 4 million views on my channel, my most popular video. Kind of insane. I did not imagine that many people would see this base. Very crazy. But yeah, we just have like a two story underground base here in just this massive like square shape with heaps of different modular little segments. We've got a sugarcane farm. Down here we have a super smelter. We've got basically everything you could need in a base in here. This next build is the ultimate underground storage base. So basically, yeah, it's um it's underground and it's got a lot of storage. Next, we have another underground base or more of like a below ground base. I believe this was entirely built by Extra Builds and was his base for a little while in the Pro Builder SMP, one of my old ass freaking survival series. Next, we have another underwater Subnautica style base.
space here and a bit of a different layout. So we got these like two kind of like uh, modular segments, I guess. And that leads into this back area with a massive crop farm and nothing much else in the other ones. Next, we have another build based on a reference image. And this is of an underwater cave with like a big bridge going through it. Um, we did take artistic liberty to this and add a bunch of greenery to it. The original image did not have that. This next build here is an underwater greenhouse. So it's just a massive glass dome. And on the inside, we have a bunch of like greenery stuff. We got plants, we got flowers, everything you could need in a greenhouse. This next build here is an underwater submarine bay, which is based on an image from the game Rust. And I think it was one of their updates of uh, adding like a submarine bay kind of underwater lab building or something. And I just got super inspired by it and decided to make something like that in Minecraft here. This build is an absolutely massive one. And it was a collab between myself, extra builds, Ritz builds, and also someone else I cannot remember the name of. I am so sorry. But yeah, it is just a massive vineyard. We've got this like cute little layout down here. Just this like simple little design here using some leaves and stuff. And we just alternate the leaves between them to get this nice look. And then back here we have this absolutely massive building. I don't think I built any of this. And up next we have another vineyard. This time it's just a small little kind of version. Next we have some herb farms. Um, yeah, basically these are meant to be Mary Jane, you know what I'm saying? This one here is uh, kind of in the layout as if, uh, you know, someone's just growing it in their backyard. This next one here is kind of an upgrade from the backyard one. We've transitioned into more of a field, like a nice fenced off field, and we have these big sections of the crop here. This next one is yet again another upgrade, except, uh, you know, not in size, but more so in, uh, you know, the growth of it. We have uh, a hydroponic setup in here. And now for the final build of the video, I'm going to leave you with the first ever build I created in my journey here. So this is the first ever build I uploaded onto my Instagram page that is now gone, unfortunately. And it's just a nice little greenhouse. Nothing too crazy here. Obviously, I was just starting out. I do still really like the shape of this and this nice little touch on the back that I didn't really showcase at all. It's meant to be like a flower kind of thing. And then on the inside, we just have a super simple little crop kind of layout. And yeah, so once again, if you want to download any of the builds I've shown in this video, they're all going to be available on my Patreon. If any of them aren't there, be sure to just DM me if you want to get a download for any of them. So yeah, that's literally over 500 builds plus way more on my Patreon. And it's, uh, it's, you know, it's pretty cheap. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.